Hey, y'all, I needed me a nap, but I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I needed a nap, but I'm here. I'm here. Oh, it's gospel. Let me hush, because I was about to start cursing. <laughs> So, my, not my CD skipper. <laughs> That's like you got um, the good old days of praise dancing when your CD used to skip and you just had to pause for a second. <laughs> be and, like, then, eh. and then they'd be like, take your time, take your time. That's <laughs> take all right. Your time, baby. Take your time. <laughs> but we are so glad you all have joined us today for this amazing and this anointed and appointed spaces. Amen, amen, amen. And who are the 2024 national champions? Huh? The South Carolina Gamecocks. How are you all feeling? Well, first of all, how are you all feeling about the Final Four? And then just overall, the national championship matchup. Like, what what went through your mind as that buzzer hit 0 I already told y'all in the chat. I was crying. I ain't even gonna lie. I, like, I just, like, I felt so full from the season because of how last season ended and the way the season started. Like I literally, when it was like one minute left and like, it just sit that like it set in that they were about to win this thing, especially with how the game started and the amount of fans that were just like pro Iowa, just the media being pro Iowa, like everything just screaming pro Iowa. And I was just like, they really about to do this. Um, and I just started like tearing up. And then on the big screen, when they showed Don tearing up and Aaliyah tearing up, I just started crying even more. Like I was just overwhelmed with emotion. I was just so proud and happy for them, um, for the program, for Don, like just overwhelmed with emotion. That was the opposite, y'all. When I saw Don crying, it made me tear up. You know what I mean? Because I know she don't cry. But other than that, child, I was. I was going off. Fuck they talking about. <laughs> what the fuck we do? Y'all was never going to win this game. I don't buy none of that. Gamecocks, ho. That was me. Oh, I, that, that's all I could get a girl at that point in time. That's what the fuck I'm talking about. That's what I was doing. Can't even lie to you, player. Now, I talk shit during the game, especially <laughs> when uh, Big Tessa started hooping. I said, oh, bitch. Oh, like I was talking shit during the game, but if, for some reason, with like one minute left, I was just like, "Wow," because it was just like when you think about all the opposition that like Dawn kind of went through for the last several weeks about her faith and the comments about um, transgender athletes and just everything like that. It just seems like. We, I mean, everybody on the timeline been saying, you know, when the devil gets busy, there's a big blessing coming. And just to like, yeah, man, you, it, it was just, it was a lot. I think Don summed it up perfectly, though, which he gave her comments after the game to go from that feeling last year to being back on top and nobody thought he would be there. I think that's, to me, that's what made it so, like, surreal. It's like no, everybody counted this out. Everybody was like, oh, y'all not going to do that. Y'all number six. Y'all losing five people. Like, and they, they got it, little Estelle. But maybe little Estelle got in the lab last summer. <laughs> and it was time to go to work. Estelle. And the work paid off. So I'm just, I'm genuinely happy for them. Like, for the team, for Don. Like, they deserve this. Because they deserved it last year. But it is what it is. Shay. Hey, girl. <laughs> Do you want me? Do you want to love me like that? That's how I feel right now. <laughs> All this goddamn complaining and crying. <laughs> oh, congratulations. Hey, the girl I just want to say, I, well, I saw Lo, like Lo was right. She was definitely going off. Because I looked over and Lo, I feel like she was standing the whole time. And... <laughs> I wasn't playing. All you saw was that hair and that waist. You can see that on the last, on like that one of the last steals Raven got, I'm like up snapping, and you can see me in the camera like snapping, going off, clapping my hands, pointing, and all of that. Like I'm just not playing with the most, and they can hear me. They can hear everything. I was sitting around the people from the NCAA, and I knew how you were cheering for people too, and y'all wrong. 
I can hear it, and y'all can hear me. I want everybody in the arena hear me. Y'all wrong, y'all dirty. I know y'all cheering for it. It's obvious, but let me put y'all on. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Let me flash this ring that I got from South Carolina that my people paid my tuition for, and I graduated. I heard y'all, so I wanted to make sure I was live and could have let y'all know. Not yet, can't say that word on here. To let y'all know. It was just, I'm not like, <clears throat> I know I, I told several of you all that. Man, sorry, my voice still going. I don't know what was going on in that air up there in Cleveland, but it got me. But um, that first that first quarter, you know, I wasn't nervous, but I was like, now wait a minute, now, <laughs> like what's going on? But as you all say, uh, we we know if if you're fans of the program, yes, you understand that we're a second half team, but that doesn't stop you from feeling your feelings. And I was like, all right, now let's go ahead and tighten up this ship, right? I don't think I don't think that was the second half. I don't think that was a second half team thing. I think it was just Iowa came in because at the end of the day, right? This is a national championship game. Ain't nobody no home. Right. Iowa came out and they knew we got to punch these girls in the mouth fig- figuratively. We have to punch a team like this. We got to punch. Them I don't know. They, they they don't call us bar fighters. They might want to for real. Right. That's why I said figuratively because I ain't want nobody to think I was being mean. But I think they knew. We got to punch these girls in their mouth first. We got to punch them off early if we want to, if we even want to be in this game. They know that. That coach now, regardless of what the media say, regardless of who Caitlin Clark is, that girl in her basketball, she knew that too. Regardless of all of this, this, all of this other stuff, that lady know we got to punch these girls in their mouth early, or we not, or we don't stand no goddamn chance. And I think that's what they did, and I think they came out knowing that, knowing that. So I don't even think it was a sense of. Our girls came out particularly lazy or not doing right. They weren't hitting shots. I think they had to kind of adjust. I don't even think it was a second half team thing. They just got punched in the mouth first. But and that's and to me, that's a good game plan from Lisa Bluter. Like she knew. So I think they just had to like take that, take that hit, and just get it back on the money. Because by the you know, second half, child, we was winning. We was in the game before the second half. We yeah, made it. we was, we had a three point lead going into halftime. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, a lot of it was also, this was a lot, and I guess, you know, the world would know this if they told their story, but this was a lot of their first times in a game of this magnitude, right? Like, when you look at Iowa, yes, we know Iowa doesn't have a lot of five stars. It's just Caitlin, and they got some four stars on the team, blah, 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 whatever. But this Iowa team, in theory, had more experience in this game that they could draw from, from last year. So wanting to punch South Carolina in the mouth early, it happened to them last year versus LSU, right? Mm -hmm. LSU got them early and jumped on them. So in their head, from experiencing that last year, they knew that they had to come in this game and start off fast. Outside of Camilla, outside of really Camilla, because Camilla's the only one who really played in that championship game in 2022, but she didn't really play significant minutes. Every, everybody else on the team has not played in this type of game. And so when the game started, I liked the shots that they were getting, mm-hmm. but the misses were just, like, slightly off, and it gave nerves to me. Like, mm-hmm. it gave – I was going super fast. Our brain's kind of just all over the place right now. And I just kept telling my sister and my friend who was next to me, I was just like, they just got to settle in. They're – they, like, I was like, give them time. Let them settle in. They just trying to figure it out right now. They're going to settle in. And so for me, I wasn't really nervous because I kind of saw it going that way. I saw them kind of getting down a little bit early because of the crowd. The energy was behind Iowa. Iowa was a very energy-heavy team. Um, So when they're home, they usually light it up pretty well. And I was like, they'll adjust. South Carolina will figure it out. Mm -hmm. And that's why Don didn't call that turn off. She sat her ass down and watched them get it together. So... I should have started with the, the 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 semifinals game. So let's rewind a little bit because we're definitely going to come back to the national championship. So game one of the day, South Carolina versus North Carolina State. What were some things that you saw doing that game that may have surprised you? Um, uh, who was a standout player for you in that game or standout players? And then obviously going on to UConn versus Iowa. We know what we're going to talk about when we get to that one. Ashley with the BDE. Yeah. Yeah. Nine, 20 rebounds? 20, yeah, like, 20. what? She checked out that game. I'm like, she had what? 20. Excuse me? 20. 20. 20. That, 
Yeah, 20 rebounds. What? Huh? What? Ashley with the BDE. And then um, I will also say that Camilla, like, the dominance of her, I, I think this entire tournament, Camilla's been very dominant, but in that game, I was like, oh, bitch, okay. <laughs> like, all right, let's go then. Um, and then Ravens defense, I mean, speaking of, you know, the Iowa game, I think um, – a lot of people have talked about that, but Ravens defense this entire Final Four was masterful to me. Like, because leading into this game, we talked about NC State's big three guards, how impressive their guards are. You had some pro players like DT, um, DT and Sue on their broadcast saying, like, those are pro-style guards and those guards can play in the pros and how is South Carolina going to stop their guards? But Raven locked Sanaya up. Like, I didn't realize how tough her defense was on her until I rewatched it. And I was like, oh, Raven was in her ass. Like, what? Raven was defending her ass off this weekend. If she ain't did nothing else, Raven was defending her ass off. I think people was just chatting. Oh, this is this and this. How South Carolina going down? You're just chatting. You just want somebody to take them down because or y'all don't goddamn watch because NC State, they had a phenomenal run and I will not take nothing nothing from them. But NC State was so up and down all all season long. Their guards are – they they have really, really, really good guards. They do, but their guards aren't always consistent. Their post – I mean, River Ball, when I think, holds serve for them really well, but it's, it's, she's not fucking with Camilla on any given day. Mimi is never fucking with anybody on that team. People just wanted something to chat about. People just wanted to wanted to see South Carolina lose because if you watched them play all season, it, it just never gave that. And that's not even no shade. And I and I, and I hate. I don't want it to sound like I'm I'm I'm, I'm shit talking North Carolina State because that's not what I'm doing at all. But people just was chatting like, are they don't watch? Are you just you're you're speaking to make it sound like you're smart because that's what you want to happen, but. That's just not what it gave. And you could say, oh, well, they held on with them in the first quarter. Ain't nobody no hoe. These girls are competitive girls. You're not finna let nobody lay down and, and walk, you know, walk all over you in no big game like this. So they did do well for the first half. But after that, it was just too much. They were outmatched. Like, people just was chatting. There's no way that you thought that that was going to be a game. It's not. You just didn't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got to be honest. I'm sorry. Come on yeah, I told my my dad because my mom, she was kind of my dad and my mom, they were a little stressed about that game going into it, you know, nervous and stuff. And I was like, to be honest, um, I like I told my sister and them, too. I was like, I think the Oregon State game was going to be the tougher game before the final four. Like I was like, I wouldn't be shocked if the Oregon State game is tougher for South Carolina than their final four game. And that's no shade to NC State, but when I look at NC State, South Carolina has the athletes to match. Like, South Carolina, good team, well, great team, but you like I think people underestimate how quick they are defensively sometimes. Like, they're a little smaller, but they're quick as hell. And their defense, to me, this season has gone underrated because everyone kind of just wanted to talk about they finally got three-point shooters, and this is the difference between last year's team and this year's team. And did y'all know last year's team couldn't shoot threes that well? This year's team shoot threes. Did y'all know that they lost five starters? This year's team has starters that can score. That's literally all they wanted to talk about. But I think South Carolina's defense went very underrated this year. They had, like, the number one field goal percentage defense this year. And they, I, I want to say the first time I really heard them talk about that was in the game on Sunday when they said this is the first time we're seeing a team with the number one field goal defense versus the number one offensive field goal percentage. So, yeah. I think let's, I know, I know, I think Lo uh, mentioned it or maybe it was Yana in regards to Camilla really had a really, really good tournament run. And Goes back to what we've said all season. When she puts it together at a consistent level, you can't stop her. Ooh, and I rest from, my case. So, yeah. Period. Yeah. Period. I rest my case. I rest all of this talk, and y'all just hating on that girl. And SD players and SD fans hate her and give her time. 
All of that culminated into exactly what she did at the end of the season. We never hated her. We never wanted her to be anybody else. We wanted her to go out there and do her fucking thing. Whatever that took, whatever it was, we needed Camilla to do that. If it's to go grab 17 rebounds, do that. If it's to put the ball through her chest, do that. If it's to, if it's to sprint down the court like a gazelle, if it's to jump for a rebound, do that. And in this last last little quarter of the season she did exactly that and she looked phenomenal and if I her draft stock she was gonna get drafted regardless like we already know she big she's six seven and it has the tools but if if somebody if they somebody picked her at two as opposed to the other girl I would not be surprised Camilla looked all around like a whole different woman in in this last half quarter of the season and there's no way that you can deny it that's what we were talking about that's what we wanted for Camilla. I think that little incident of her having to sit for a little bit and think, like, oh, snap, like, this this been the one be over. This this can't be taken away from me kind of woke her up, like, oh, yeah, let me, let me, let me show, let me show these people what I'm, I'm about. So, initially, I was mad at you, Miss Angelica Suffering. Initially, I was mad at you, Miss Flage Johnson and Miss, uh, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. LSU's, y'all fans. But I thank you. I thank you, Flage. I thank you, Angel Reese, for pulling her hair. She might not thank you that, but I will. I thank you, Angel. I thank you, Miss Angelica. I thank all of y'all because y'all woke up a goddamn monster and she finna be a problem for the rest of y'all. And y'all, and, and period. So don't, so don't, don't try me on no other game or on no other SC player or none of that shit. I know what I want. I know potential when I see it, and I know what the girls can give. But thank y'all for waking up a goddamn monster. And she made it a she made it a problem for the rest of y'all for the rest of the season, and I love that for her. Period. Well, that's that. So now going to game two, Iowa versus UConn. It's quite an exciting game. And then we all saw the call. At the end of the game, there was much debate around that particular call. But what were some of your takeaways from that particular game? Nico with the BDE. Yeah, <laughs> Nico. Nico was a great defensive. Oh, she was defending her <laughs> ass off. Um, I think my biggest takeaway from it was that, and Gino said it too, so don't be trying to chop my head off, UConn fans, but we've talked about this already before. Paige got to be selfish when it's time to be selfish. Like, we all know Paige is a dog. Like, we all know Paige can hoop. We all know that she's a tough guard. But Paige is very unselfish in moments that she needs to be selfish. I thought when the game was on the line, she was kind of looking for teammates, and I was just like, Paige, take, you got to take that. Like, at this point in the game, I need you to be the one shooting the ball. I need you to be the one, you know, making shit happen and going to the rim, getting these foul calls. And for me, I thought that was kind of the difference maker sometimes in the game because Caitlin was being a little bit more aggressive, looking for a shot, going to the rim, so she was getting fouled for free throws and stuff like that. Um so, yeah, I think that was probably my biggest takeaway, and I'm sure Paige will kind of learn from it and hopefully come back next year as that player. But I think we kind of already talked about that before on Spaces and how that's the difference between Paige and CC sometimes and how Paige will defer versus <laughs> just take over. CC got me weak. <laughs> I'm, with, I'm, with, I'm with Yana, like, you can't be staying. Sorry, y'all, I didn't came from happy hour. Shit. <laughs> My bad. You can't stand you in the in the eye shit. Them tequila sunrises and them readers, the margaritas are curling See? bitch toes. See? <laughs> um, but if you page like I'm watching Nika and KK dribble in circles because they are like, please come get the ball. And I stay out of the arguments because I'm not arguing with y'all. But for all the punching down y'all tried to do about juju and efficiency. If I have to pick between efficiency or my best player coming to get the damn ball and trying to make some shit happen, give me the kid who's going to come and get the ball and try to figure it out. Yep. Like, I can't watch you as a superstar stand in the corner while the game is on the line. You got a chance to go to a natty, bro. Come get to rock. Yeah, I agree. It was part. It was during the game. Like, I'm, I, you know, I'm frustrated. I'm I'm. Just... She really made me mad, y'all. Y'all yeah, wasn't even like particularly cheering for either one, but just just as a basketball fan, I'm like, Paige, come get the ball. Why, why is Ashlyn taking these shots? 
why is KK taking shots? And not that the girls can't shoot, and, and Ashley's a phenomenal shooter. But it's just like, Paige, you are Paige. I would, if if me, if my team going to lose, I, I, I miss eight shots. Because you're you going to blame me anyway. I'm the superstar. I'm going to miss eight shots before I let my team just go shoot. Why is nigga shooting the ball? Why does nigga have the ball in her hands right now? Go get it. Like, I just, I, could, I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe I was watching her be so passive. And, you know, so I'm sitting there looking at her like, is she for real right now? Like, I just could not believe that she did not take charge of this. I couldn't believe she did that like that. I, I couldn't believe it. And then at the end, she tried to make something happen and it ended up in a in a, in a a call that, that you know? So I, I could not believe she, I couldn't believe she did that, y'all. I was kind of in shock. I'm not going to lie. I'm not even going to lie. So talking about this call, <clears throat> do you call it? Do you let it go in that type of game? What, what's your belief when it comes to that? Okay, so here's why I wouldn't call it because they didn't call it all game. Bingo. So it, it's not like for me, it wasn't really about um, when it happened. It was more so, more so like I saw Iowa with a lot of moving screens throughout the game, and it didn't get called. I think UConn had a few called, but they also had some more moving screens happen in the game too that wasn't called. So I just like a level of consistency. Like if you're not going to call these things on Iowa um, while they're having all these moving screens to get Caitlin open and you're not calling it on UConn at some points in the game too, don't call it with like 10 seconds left in the game, um, especially like – when it's like game time, game deciding, shots about to happen, like yeah, just give me a level of consistency. Bingo. It was a lot of moving screens in the championship game too, but they weren't called, so you know. Okay, so now let's fast forward back to Sunday to the national championship game. I know we talked about Big Tessa doing her thing. We talked about Ravens defense, but. How about the second half from Chloe Jackson? I want to talk about God. Because <laughs> God is able to do just what he said he would do. Boom, Tell us boom, about boom, your God. Boom. He's going to fulfill yes. every promise to you. If you know the words, sing them in the audience. Don't, Don't give up, up on God. God. For you dirty, dusty, raggedy ass bitches that <laughs> thought South Carolina was good after the semifinals last year, I know an able God, bitch. And for you bitches that Wait. don't believe in the Lord, I know an able God, bitch, because he took South Carolina with five starters seven players that left the roster with a team that was embarrassed that got called bar fighters with a coach that's a black woman that keeps getting left off the list in South Carolina where we don't care for black people and trans whites and LGBTQ keeps he took some black folk from South Carolina and said I'm going I'm going to bless you right in front of where they embarrassed you okay he was able this motherfucking weekend I serve a god okay where faith without works is dead and my coach kept telling your ass I serve a God of uncommon favor. That uncommon favor was that motherfucking three that Camilla hit at the SEC chat. That uncommon favor was that motherfucking game that Camilla had to sit out. That uncommon favor was my laser sitting out against US UNC. That uncommon favor was losing Coach Shimmel and, and, and having to bring in Winston and motherfucking Khadija. That uncommon favor was Don getting her third title on a motherfucking undefeated season. That uncommon favor was the Lord blessing Asia Wilson in 2023 so that he could best Raven Johnson in 2024. That uncommon favor was letting you bitches chuckle, laugh, kiki-ki, and ha ka ha about Raven motherfucking Johnson. That uncommon favor was them seven, them eight points, them seven points that Raven held that girl to. That uncommon favor was in the face of and in spite of you bitches not wanting to cover us and wanting to be willfully ignorant and dense about coverage and Pharisees was about to still win the title. Even when all of you bitches, all of the narratives said that Iowa will win. So I serve an able God. And if we're going to talk about this championship, we're going to talk about the Lord in the room. Because even when the team was down, to about 10 down to start the game, there was no shake. There was no quiver. There was faith. There was favor. And the Lord was in the room. And the Lord was with us. And he was not moved.
moved, okay? The girls were not shaking. The girls were not shaking. That uncommon favor has kept you bitches from getting cussed out by Don Michelle Staley. That, um, that, that favor is the favor that allows her to come up on this app and just block you bitches instead of telling you how poor and dusty you are. That uncommon favor allows her to still be around these head coaches that sit around and want to kiss her ass but talk shit and want her team to lose. That uncommon favor is what allows her to still be interviewed by Holly, even though she knows Holly don't give a fuck about her team or as a coach. That uncommon favor has kept you bitches, okay? That uncommon favor has kept this team, but it's kept you bitches, okay? And I just want you motherfuckers to know that I can't nobody take this third this third championship. I want you bitches to know that Don has won in every single era of college basketball. She won as a player, bitch. She won the Olympic, bitch. She won at Temple, bitch. She won at South Carolina when nobody wanted her to, bitch. She won with Asia, bitch, even when you thought UConn was only gonna do it, bitch. She won with Aaliyah, bitch, after them tears. And now she won with motherfucking Camilla. Don't play with it. He's able. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm so happy that she recorded. I'm gonna have to snip that. <laughs> hey, that's what I want you bitches to know. And it don't matter. We can. We might not ever be back. But I want you to do them three titles in South Carolina. It's going to take a lot of y'all some years to catch up, Mustard. Okay? The show was the show. 18.9 million hoes. The girlies was clicking up on the downfall. Okay? Okay? I saw they you heard. bitches this summer. I saw it, you bitches this summer. Click it, it, it fell out after you get another season. Because the, what, the, the, what they were clicking up over d dissipated. <laughs> the enemy of my enemy is my friend ass bitches, but I serve an able God. Clicked up. The girl oh, and we need to talk about the person that was um uh what what was it? The media people or the media writers who was so Ooh, is Pow Pow gonna work with South Carolina? Ooh, why would she do that? Y'all was her biggest fans last season at Oregon, but y'all ain't say nothing about her all season. But that's okay because the game called Nation, the fans got Pow Pow back. Y'all don't ever have to say shit else about it, but we will. And and we her brother, I know he in here probably somewhere. Her brother, the fuck lit. And he happy where he at? That means she happy where we at. So we got Pow Pow forever. Cause y'all don't gotta say a, uh, another word about it. I noticed. They ain't retweet nothing about this, nothing. I went and looked. Mm -hmm. I went and looked. Y'all ain't said nothing it's about the girl. It's easy to search some tweets. Yep. I y'all ain't said nothing about the girl since she transferred. Is she gonna work? Is she gonna fit? And she came in and fit in seamlessly and she went to work. But y'all ain't said shit about her since. Y'all think we ain't peep. I noticed. I noticed, but that's okay. We got her. We got her for, we mm -hmm. got her. Keep them green shoes on though. Keep them green shoes on. Period. Green <laughs> shoes got to stay. And let me also add. Um, we, we might have, they might not have came on them visit, but God, Don brought who, who she needed to bring in. Don brought the motherfucking best transfer in the country to help her team win a title. You bitches said, oh, all she can do is coach defense. She, she, you know, she doesn't know how to, how to coach offense. But baby, the, the players that won the game was, was a recruit. So as much as y'all want to say uh, the transfers, the transfers, the transfers, the, the atmosphere was shifted by two recruits, freshmen. The atmosphere was shifted by players that didn't listen to y'all get on this app and say, well, why are they getting playing time? And Malaysia should start. And, and, and Pow Pow needs to come off the bench. The atmosphere was shifted by people that understood their roles. Because even when you bitches get on here thinking you know and trying to be nice and nasty about the South Carolina program because your coach can't coach and keep chant and talent, the, the, the three C girls won it for us, horse. The three C girls. I'm well, a lady too, but that baby ain't no three C. I wasn't no, wait a minute now. Them, I'm talking about the two. The two. The two. Pow the Pow two. and John <laughs> <laughs> and and Big Fagan, I know you whores been on these in the little private group chat talking about you want tonight to transfer. Nana, nana, boo, bitch, she ain't. Man, I Big, love Mister Fagan. So that Sanaya did did a really good job this tournament as well. Sanaya is good. She did a big one. She, a girl. yeah, she did a big one. Oh, I love her. Oh, she's such a leader. Oh my God, I love her. I can't wait to see what she brings next year. Like she, the footwork, the defense, she was she was on it. And and I, and I and I hate when people get to stat watching and don't watch the game. Well, how was it a revenge tour? She shot this many. Did you not see her shut that motherfucker down on defense? My girl missed her damn shots because she had no legs because she was sitting on defense. 
<laughs> Watch the damn game. My girl was sitting on defense. She was fighting over them, moving screens, two or three and four of them at the same time, mind you. All damn game. And she was sitting and she held y'all goat, whatever y'all call her, to seven points. So don't worry about how oh, y'all got to watch the game. Y'all got to stop stat watching. Y'all got to stop trying to be cute because you're not. <laughs> you're never going to be cute. Okay, let's start there. Stop stat watching. <laughs> that girl did her big one. And she told y'all, matter of fact, let's talk about it. She told y'all at the beginning of the season, it was a revenge tour. And she stuttered a little bit. She stumbled a little bit. Maybe she had to even believe what she was saying. But she got that get back. And she said that get back a motherfucker. And she shut all y'all ass up. Sure did. It. Aaliyah and told her this is your team ass. now, and she I ran with it. I don't give a rat's ass if she never averaged 15 and 10 or 20 and 5. B- bitches don't know what real point guards are, and that's why their teams continue to lose. Who? Ra- Raven is the motherfucking big bird. Raven crafted that motherfucking championship team. Raven reached out and said, y'all come play for South Carolina, and, and let's win this big one. If Raven, you bitches don't know, Raven motherfucking Johnson is triple-double ass player in the motherfucking National High School Championship. Raven motherfucking Johnson is one of the most decorated players in Georgia high school history. You know Raven why? motherfucking Johnson tore her ACL in her motherfucking second or third game at South Carolina. So the same way you bitches like to get on here and talk about injuries, 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 they're not fully back. They need to get their get back. Raven had to get her get back. But y'all don't give grace to black women that play for black women because y'all think them bitches supposed to move mountains, motherfucking um, Tasha Cobbs. Okay? But Raven said, this is my year. And I, I'm going to do it how I want because I'm a bad bitch. I do what I want. I do what I want. And she did what she wanted and got that motherfucking get back, ho. <laughs> Two championships. You bitches can't even spell a title. We just can't spell it out. <laughs> well, <clears throat> what's some? What were some of your other favorite moments from the national championship game? My legs are about oh, to get no. a motherfucking bag because why you bitches was counting coins when we <laughs> leave this motherfucking championship game? It what the girls like to say? Stop because I didn't have any superstars. They couldn't cover them because they didn't have any superstars. Well, they can count them motherfucking titles for us, okay? We can count that motherfucking bonus that Don got. We can count that motherfucking Red Bull bitch drink sip sip ho. We can count them motherfucking Curry brand the Curry brand. The, Kurt, not the business, the motherfucking brand, the, the motherfucking Curry brand. Count them checks, whores. Count them checks. A Trump check. A Donald Trump check. They're done. They're done. <laughs> Shout out to Kay, well, the also. funniest thing about it, them girls, all of that with a smile on their face, giggling up and down the court. Right. Trying to piss Camilla off and she's sitting there smiling back at you. That's a dangerous woman. <laughs> Bro, yeah. That will piss me off. I'm sorry. <laughs> when Tessa shot that brick against and NC also, State. We also peep you bitches trying to join the Amen Ha Ha Kumbaya corner after we won the title because it wasn't no Kumbaya two weeks ago. What you said, Shay? Oh, when Tessa shot that brick off the side of the backboard and she giggled and <laughs> she was smiling running down the court. God, that kid is so goddamn funny for no reason. <laughs> Like she just is unfazed. Like everything is smiles and giggles and three pointers. <laughs> yes. Come on, Rachel Bantam. <laughs> I like the way she it's like she she just don't she she like you said, she's fearless. She'll sit down and guard anybody. It's shit. That when the girl who was it guarding her, was it Kate Martin? She fell, test looked at it, said, Well shit, dribble right behind the shot. Right. <laughs> 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 She did. She's just fearless. She's just fearless. I just. Chloe had a Chloe had a really start a uh, nice start to the second um the second half. I'm mad I missed it. I was in the back trying to hurry and edit whatever. I just heard all the cheering. I couldn't tell if it was Iowa cheer or South Carolina cheer. But I came back. She had a double double. So like like it's, it's it funny was because good. it was funny because Tessa pointed out to me what she was good at in that video. She re- she get real good rhythm shots. She gets stuff that when you start getting in the rhythm, it's like Chloe Chloe gets it. Like, she be in the rhythm really, really well. Tessa pointed that out, and I said, hmm, she really does. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know who talked to her or what Don said at halftime, but when she came out the second half, it was it was a different Chloe. Like, it was like, in the beginning, the first half, the moment felt a little too quick for her and maybe a little too big. But once she settled in, she was taking it to them. Through the chest, knocking down her shots, rebounding her ass off. Like 
Yeah, Chloe was phenomenal in that second half. To me, she helped them stretch that lead and help them get a little bit more comfortable um, to really just, like, run away with it. Mm-hmm. Chloe's superpower is, I think, going forward in her career is matchups. Like, mm-hmm. Chloe is the matchup player. Like, this was the perfect matchup for her, and that's why I got to do my give my big one to Winston, is because Iowa does not have a true four. Like, in a true system, Hannah Stokey would probably be the four mm-hmm. and then one of their other bigs. But since it was Camilla versus Stokey or whoever they put in, a falter was the one that had to guard Chloe. And once Chloe realized, like, if I get the switch, I can actually play my game. I can either take the mid-range or attack the, the ball because they slow too and I'm a little quicker than they are. Like, she, she could hoop. Like, we could see true Chloe hoops. And... I think what set her apart was typically Don doesn't leave her in because she doesn't always rebound. Well, she was racking the bitches up. The knees looked a little stable. The inner thighs looked a little strong. She, she and she was like snatching that board down. Okay. So, for you know, I'm just really excited for Chloe because I think we've all pointed out on in the committee that, you know, it's looked a little shaky. You know, Don's had to sit her in important moments. And to have your best game like against a real good opponent in this setting is huge because when you go into the exit interview don can say this is what i've been wanting you to do when you do this you get this and now it's like okay how do i put that body of work together for a full season and i think she needed that but the team needed that as well so i was really excited for chloe that she was able to find herself in the biggest moment and actually contribute. How about the fit? Not even just of Dawn, but the whole staff. Dog, what you call it? Gucci shirt was hilarious. Um, Boyer. 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 Well, Ryan was weak at that shirt all game. That thing was funny. I don't know why. Is it because she had it on? That thing was funny to me. You know, for those of you who didn't see it, I'll go ahead and put it on the Summer Jam screen. Also, a little selfish plug, shameless plug. If you swipe, you can see Boya's shirt. Uh-huh, there it is. There it is right there. Gucci, I love you. You love me. You love me. Yes, hilarious. Don was giving the girls renaissance. What you call it said, was it Schoolboy Q? Talking about somebody, some, one of them rappers was like. Schoolboy Q. He said Don just won the championship in a bulletproof Louis Vuitton vest. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> it was, it was, um, uh, Jolette's motherfucking jacket with the, with the, with the red, green, and that, that thing was crispy. Now Which that is- I know that, uh, Winston did the scout. And the scout was done to perfection. Winston pulled up in that blue suit. Like, yeah. I know what the fuck I just did. And, ooh, I can't wait. And, 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 like, and, and the suit. <laughs> the suit was tailored, honey. Okay. It was. Okay. The, McQueen, the McQueens was fitting. He, he sat was, down he... on that bench. Like, <laughs> yep, I did that. <laughs> just wait on it. Just wait on it. But y'all, the way Winston was jumping up every motherfucking yes. time Taylor got the ball, I said, oh, he cooking with this <laughs> <laughs> he was clean. He was ready. He told him, "Y'all, I was weak." He told him, "Put your hand in that mofo face the whole time," and they sat with a hand right. That same hand Angel was waving in her face. Raven took it and put it right back in her face, and sat there <laughs> and the bitch could see, <laughs> and she could not see, and sat like that the whole game. I said, "They really got their hair screwed up about that." Period. Well, <clears throat> yeah, that. Was- Okay, this is a question. I'm, a, I'm a, this question for the South Carolina fans in the group. 2017, 2022, Oof. or 2024? Deeper is 2024. 2017 got size, though. I don't mean, I mean, what was most satisfying? Oh, most this satisfying? One. This one to me. This one. For me. Because. Not that I don't think anybody. I think the most expected one was Aaliyah them year. That mm-hmm. one, that, that would probably be at the bottom. That first one is just really dope. Asia being able to come to South Carolina and and do her mm-hmm. big one, to get it. Um, but this one right here, everybody thought they was dust. They was clicking up. Where where I at? Low at? I ain't gonna get into that. Um, 
well, I, ooh, it got to be this one. And, and they're young and they got it done their way. And it's just the first time we've seen something really different from Don. It got to be this one. It got to yeah, be. And losing agree. like that and then coming back, Coda, they said, hey, boo, Coda. Hey, Coda. And winning like, and winning like that, I think it got to be this one, right? Yeah, I agree. What, seven yeah. players they lost? They lost now hundreds I- of game worth of experience. Yeah, this team. I can tell the truth now, y'all. When I tell y'all, I maybe watched three total minutes of that game. <laughs> y'all, I was driving back from competition. So, Quentin, so I got to take it all the way back. So, we went to church for um, Resurrection Sunday. And y'all, I posted about the word. And the thing I kept in my phone was, don't tell them, just show them. And y'all, that thing really hit me in my spirit because that's life. Like, for black folk and just underdogs in general, like we get so wrapped up trying to prove to people who we are and what we do and like our worth and all that stuff that sometimes we block our own blessings because we worried about the opponent and not like our journey. So I thought I, I had to correlate that thing back to South Carolina because we started this season not knowing shit. Like we knew there was talent on the roster. We knew that in a few years, this could be a championship type roster but no clue what it was. They went to motherfucking Paris and said, hold my motherfucking beverage, okay? And even still, I was like, good, but the ball going to drop at some point. And every single month of the season, every single big game, they found a way to win. And so then the next thing was, can we get over the heartbreak of last year? And every single thing they did kept proving that they ain't even worried about it. So, it's Championship Sunday. I already knew they was going to get past NC State. I wasn't stressed about the game at all. We'll talk about that later. But, y'all, I'm at the convention center with my students. He danced all morning, y'all. When I tell you my stomach was in knots, I had went to the bathroom three times. Knots, okay? But I, I had faith. I had faith. I just kept saying, you know, don't tell them, just show them faith, period. If you, if you believe it's going to happen, trust it's going to happen, it's going to happen. That's why I kept saying. I said, you know, Don has been through too much, and every single time, you know, somebody tries to make her, you know, take her out the picture or take her out, he always responds with a victory. So that was in the back of my mind, but I'm still nervous. Okay, he's shaking like a stripper. So we get in the car. It's 115. It's a four-hour drive home. So I had timed it. I was like, I need a distraction so that I'm not tempted to sit up in this house and shake, to sit in this hotel room and shake and watch this game. So I started driving. Got on the interstate. Okay, it's about 2.58. I look at my phone. I take the phone. I put it under my right thigh, and I'm driving. <laughs> Every single, I'm, I'm counting. Like, I ain't even looking at the time. I'm counting. I'm like, okay, 10 minutes went by. 20 minutes went by. Okay, I finally pick up my phone. I pick up my phone, and the score is 22 to 8. Y'all, I thought all my faith was gone, child. I felt, ve- I didn't even, I didn't, I, didn't, I just turned the ESPN, didn't see the game. I just saw the score. My face went flush. Child, I went into deep prayer. I said, thank Jesus, my God. And I was praying. Y'all, I was praying, 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 praying. Okay? Child, I, I, I found my calm. I rolled the window down. The air hit me. I found my calm. Okay? I'm on the interstate. It's traffic. I picked the phone up again. 20 minutes later, it's 22 to 18. I said, oh, today. <laughs> okay? But I kept saying faith. I put it back down. 22 to 18. Okay? I said, oh, Jesus, he's not going to let us fail. Okay. I kept it down for another 30 minutes. I turned the phone again, and it was 37, 37. <laughs> my glory, glory be to the Lamb of God. Okay. Put the phone back down. I'm sweating under my armpits, but I'm still saying faith, 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 faith. I picked the phone up a motherfucking again, and it says, Tahina Pow Pow just hit a three. Woo, Jesus, my God, I'm almost home. I picked the phone up again, and it says, Raven just stole the ball. It's we going into halftime with a three point lead. Child, when I saw that, when I saw that, I picked up the phone. I called my friend. I said, We are my mother's home. Mama's home. She said, When I'm gonna see you, I said, You're gonna see me tomorrow, but we, we got a game today and I'm real stressed about it. Okay. By the time that phone call was over, the third quarter was moving. And uh, y'all, it was Asia. Y'all, Asia said, I said, are you watching the game? I said, no, sister, my anxiety high. She said, I'm not watching it either. I said, oh, she said, what happened? I said, well, I'm looking at the box score every every 20 minutes. And based on the box score, we was down real bad, but the Lord. Okay? She said, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said, okay, so we praying. I said, we just going to pray. Child, by the time I looked at my phone again, 
as you said, I just did three praise breaks. I said, I just joined you. It was about 12 motherfucking points. At that moment, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew that what Pastor said at the Brook, my, my God, on Park Lane, that don't tell him, just show him was about to come true. Okay, child, I was pulling into my apartment in, in motherfucking Columbia, South Carolina. And by the time I pulled into that apartment, we had almost lost the lead. Okay, we, baby, baby, baby. Caitlin had just made that three-point shot. We was faltering. Don was staring at them players like, I'm not going to call a timeout. And my face got shaken again because I started cursing. I said, Don, if you don't call this motherfucking timeout and we pull another Tennessee, we're going to have a problem. But I, I, I calmed myself down again and I said, faith, 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 faith. By the time I finished saying faith, 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 that motherfucking Tessa Johnson and that motherfucking Camilla Cardoso said, the God is on my side. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. That, we thank you. We serve a mighty God. So when I tell you, when I tell you that I could not watch the game, but there was faith. My God, there was a word from over two weeks ago that blessed my spirit and got me through this championship. So after all of that, I came on here and cursed you bitches out and didn't watch the game. So we thank you. We thank you. <laughs> I just had to tell y'all about that. <laughs> yeah, I was, I told, I said in the chat, I knew it was good because at the beginning of the game, I was yawning. I was sleepy. And normally I'd be anxious, but I was sitting there yawning. So I knew he was good. Well, lucky y'all, because I was sweaty. <laughs> I, the only the game I was nervous for was the Oregon State one. My stomach was in knots. I was sweating so bad that Oregon State game. But yeah, was, for yeah. some reason, I definitely wasn't nervous about the, that one. Like, I don't – Rave, I, to be honest, gave me the calm that I needed. Just, like, her confidence going into these games, especially this one where she was like, I prayed for this. I wanted this. I was like, oh, yeah, she not going to be denied. Raven's <laughs> giving me this energy of I'm not going to be denied. Like, And I think it's so crazy. That's kind of what – and that's why, like, I know a while ago somebody asked us who was the leader, and me, you, and Dolores at the same time said Raven. But I think it's just different because we used to hearing, like, I knew we was going to win. I was going to do this from, like, an Aaliyah or an Asia. And that's somebody who was always – literally putting a ball in the basket, somebody who was scoring, somebody who was who seems like from the outside looking in that they're in the driver's seat. So hearing it from like Raven, who's the point guard, who might not, who doesn't score all of the points, it's just it's just a different experience. But we all know that that's Raven team. Like without Raven, they're, they're screwed. So it's just a different experience hearing it from from a from a from a Raven. But she and she did that. She did. Ooh, she did. I think what what really satisfies me the most um <clears throat> is knowing how bad she wanted it. That night prior, uh, excuse me, Friday night, after uh, both semifinal games were over, uh, you know, went to a hotel, whatever, all that stuff, everybody celebrating, yada, 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 moving on to the next round. And there was a comment made, and then I spoke to her, and she just smiled, and she said, I prayed for this. And you know, me, 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 nervous, whatever, I'm like, okay, cool. But as soon as she said, I prayed for this, I wanted this matchup, it was like all doubt went away. And like to see her go out there and to basically from the moment when Aaliyah in that pre in that post game last year looked to her while they're crying and said, This is your team, to the work that she put in over the summer, to everything, like the all the highs, all the lows, whatever of this particular season and the way she led this season and to I guess cap it off with that type of a defensive performance against a person. I won't say that humiliating her, but was a part of, I guess, the viral humiliation because of how, I guess, every how ubiquitous. Oh, Lord, I tore that word up. Excuse me, I'm chewing. I'm sick. <clears throat> Blame it on the congestion. But to see how everywhere that thing was last year, and for her to have this full moment, like I think that that was why I was just really excited for her, and she really deserves all of this. And there's nothing that anyone can ever say to take this away from her. <laughs> So now that we have now that we have gone over that, <clears throat> we know who the national champions are. And if you need us to say it again, it is the University of South Carolina Gamecocks, led by. So the, they are the undefeated. The undefeated Thank national you. champions. Thank the you, South Carolina Gamecocks, led by the Don Michelle Staley, who is a perfect three and zero when it comes to national championship games. So, <laughs> yes, yes, you know the last her last go around, they were saying, oh, you know. You, you know, Gino's undefeated. She said, well, I'm undefeated then. At that time, we only had one. But fast forward a few years, now we have three. Add two more. Double for your trouble. Amen. All right. So, 
Um, we're gonna Before go- we move on, because I don't know what you're going to next, can I talk about what I didn't like during the game? Go ahead, go ahead. I finally rewatched the game because um, I was in the arena. Mm-hmm. And, like, you would think South Carolina ain't had no family members show up to that game. You would think... I like I, honestly and truly did the people who watched on TV even get to see them celebrate the damn trophy? Like I was I, like, I, did they? Did the girls smile and jump for joy when they won? Because all I saw was Caitlyn walking to the damn back of the locker room. Like what the fuck? Like I get it, Caitlyn's your darling or whatever. But damn, can I at least get a? Uh, can I at least see Tessa smile? Can I at least see somebody hug somebody? Like I want to see Don shout a little bit. Like the fuck. Why am I watching Caitlin Clark walk out of the gym after she took an L and throw hearts to the um fan? I don't want to see that shit. I want to see the champions. I want to see the people who just won the team that went undefeated against all fucking odds. That's who I want to see. I don't want to see the girl that just lost. Period. Speaking of, speaking of about that, um, there was a time, I don't know if it showed on the camera or if you could tell that they were on the court, but at the end when Caitlin was checking out of the game, the TV cameras actually came on the court and like the ref was like, no, y'all got to go. Like this game ain't yeah. over. And like, they were literally all on the court in front of the bitch, like following Caitlin as she was checking out of the game. So like, they, they didn't care. It was yeah, already that annoyed me too, because when she checked out, you literally just saw her go down the line and yep. hug every single person. And then the last two seconds, they was like, Oh, oh and Camilla, Camilla checked yeah. out too. The fuck? Bitch, like the, the fuck? I will say. <laughs> Out in that little clip, she did not want to hug Lisa Bluter, and she did not want to hug that other little mixed-looking black girl with the straight hair with the blush. She gave everybody else a good little hug, but she she little pushed them away. I said, "Well, what's tea with Miss Bluter and Miss Blush B- mixed girl?" She was not having it, and I wouldn't have been in all of her business if it wasn't on the camera. <laughs> like I would not have been in her business if I didn't see it because she genuinely like gave like. Lisa like a little church push thing. <laughs> and, I, and the thing is, I only know because they put it all on camera, and I wouldn't have thought nothing of it if I didn't see her go down the wrestling line and hug, hug everybody else and hold it for a little bit. She pushed that little blue belt and the mixed, mixed, mixed blush girl. What's up with that? I think, to Yana's point about just how they covered that game and just the end of the game, it, it baffles me that the the way that um Ryan and Rebecca softened that entire championship experience for her and like made it like the way they it was like we believe that Caitlyn's going to win this game she is unstoppable and then as South Carolina continued to like make themselves look like they would win it turned into we have to like we have to summarize her legacy in the remaining 12 minutes of this game so that all 18 million people understand that no matter what happens in life, no matter who wins or loses, women's basketball is the future because of Caitlin Clark. Mm -hmm. And it does not matter who else is on the floor. It doesn't matter who's doing anything. We have to make sure that Caitlin gets her pillow gets her blanket, and gets a tempur mattress to lay down on so that if she chooses to cry, she can cry with her good Snuggie. And we are going to make sure to tuck her in and fold her and wrap her up so that she can snug her tears. And I'm thinking back to motherfucking 2023. These bitches did everything but that. So, no. Like, it it was so, it, it made me angry because even Dawn's generosity and her continued, her continued willingness to always think about the game gets slapped back in her face at her team's expense. Like, you watch that woman fold over and cry and, and, and take a long time to even find the words because of, and when you think about it, you know why. You watch the woman who is watching her former player have to watch her team win a game that she should have won, win a title that she should have won. 
And she could not even get the flowers. She could not be sad. She could not cry because she knew that if she did any of that, it would be plastered. She would be made a mockery. She would be made a joke. And no one would care but South Carolina fans. So you watch a coach break down and cry because she knows that at the end of the day, if my team loses, no one's going to hold them. No WNBA players are going to say, stop bullying Raven. No um, black man is going to go on ESPN and say, well, th- we, need to do mo- we need to do a better job of covering South Carolina. No one's going to say, um, like, no one's going to come to their defense but Don. So she has to cry, sh- like, shed her authentic emotions, give flowers to her team, and then say, I also want to let the world know Caitlin Clark is the future. And no one gave a rat's ass about her tears, but everyone cared to echo the sentiments that Dawn has given this girl her flowers. That, to me, summarizes the issue with sports. Because you can't even, you can't even get, get, get your just due. But when you give something else, it's taken as this ticket. Like, they were on Get Up and, like, it's amazing when a goat recognizes a goat. Well, Aaliyah won National Defensive Player of the Year, a national championship, national freshman of the year, WNBA Rookie of the Year, and y'all didn't do half this stuff. They didn't ask Lisa Bluser, Lisa Bluter to talk about her legacy. They didn't put a microphone in front of Gino and say, talk about the four years of defending Aaliyah. They didn't go to every coach everywhere and make them do a, a happy tour about the best player when Aaliyah was here. So why is it that Don continues to get used as the validator for white women? I'm tired. I wish she would stop being so nice, but I understand why she feel like she got to, but I wouldn't have said that shit. I'd have been like, to hell with all of you. This is about my team and our moment. Y'all catch me over the summer. Catch me because in the Because now, now the only thing y'all talking about, Don, is the teams that she's praised CeCe. Like y'all made y'all made it a point to laugh and hee hee ha ha and giggle about Caitlyn waving that girl off all year, but now that she got her get back, you don't want to mention it. What a hee hee ha ha now? What a hee hee ha ha now? Caitlyn had a face on her a hand on her face the whole time. What a hee hee ha ha that um, Raven and and, and 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 I want everybody. I'm so sorry, everybody to be the most for real about what we saw. Raven's defense on Caitlyn Clark was hell. Correct, correct. But if we want to keep it a buck. <laughs> if we're going to keep it a buck, them steals, Raven didn't have to work hard for it. She just dribbled the thing out the damn girl hand because the girl cause the girl hands wasn't even up protect, protecting the ball. Let's talk about that. Where was her ball security? Do y'all not – Raven literally just dribbled the ball right with her and dribbled it out of her hands every time. It wasn't no spectacular swiping or none of that, but y'all not talking about that. Like, I just – I can't I, – I don't mind – you praising her because she's has been good. I think people get this thing in your head. Well, you just don't want them to say anything about her at all. No contrarian the coon. What I'm saying is you could give her praise, but you could give other people praise as well. We're not telling you don't say shit about it, but the way that y'all do that one side of stuff, we can't even talk about the team who went undefeated. And we're not, and it's one, not a slight in UConn. We're not talking about undefeated in the days where it was one or two good teams. We're talking about undefeated in the days of parody when all season y'all have been screaming to us, oh, parody, parody, the girlies are getting better, the talent is more spread out, da da da. And this team went undefeated and y'all, y'all paying them dust. That's weird. I don't know how people are okay with that. I don't understand it. And they making every they they find it every reason to make it okay. Like stop like because Mark Mark really said it so perfectly because I've really been thinking about how do we say this all season? How do you go from saying, you know, lost all these players, no, no offense, can't do this, to now after they've done everything that you've asked them to do, turning them into, oh, they're just they're just they're supposed to win. Right. They're super team. Like, how do you do that in real time and are okay with it? Like, basically, what it was was if South Carolina's bad, we know why. If they're good, we don't care. We just gonna blanket it with they got the best recruits. No, no word to the fact that LSU deep team tremendous recruits. 
UCLA, deep team, tremendous recruits. Like, deep, their Texas, deep team, tremendous recruits. So many, Stanford, deep team, tremendous recruits. So many teams across the country have great players, have had great players, and their coaches have not been able to win in this era and go undefeated. So to take this South Carolina team and say they don't deserve flowers because, one, they don't have a star, and, two, because they got the best recruits, that's so disingenuous. But how dumb, hold on, from a source, somebody said Caitlin Clark doesn't have any ball security. She can't really handle the ball. That's why she pushes off and everything doing is a step back going left. Heard. Well, next. Um, I don't, I don't, how, how, how silly is it to say something like, well, they don't get covered because they don't have a star. Are you dumb? Did your mother drop you on your head? What, what are you talking about? What, what does that have to do with the team being good? Talk about the whole goddamn team then. Then say the South Carolina team. I don't care. Put a graphic on all of them. Pick which one did good today. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand the logic. It's just, it's just a lot of goalpost moving. It's a lot of it's a lot of goalpost movement going around. I don't understand it. I don't understand how we didn't know Gillette Law went to to Iowa, but there was so many Blue. you mean Blue. media media Blue. members there. Blue. We don't know about her records. We don't know about you mean with that connection. That was an easy storyline between you mean Raven and uh, Fagan playing. You mean longer than her, she has been with Camilla. That's another storyline. Uh, you had an Ohio product at a Bree Hall that was in the two, two Sakimas from Ohio too. Oh wow, yeah, it's just it's it's too many storylines being lost for for the sake of one. And that's what I'm saying. That that doesn't that doesn't that's what confuses me. Like, like I said, we're not saying don't talk about Caitlyn because she she is amazing. She's broken all break it broke. She has broken all of these records, but everything else because. When you talk about as marketing, like y'all always say, "Oh, dude, the little girls watching," but there's so many different types of little girls across the world. Every little girl doesn't look like Caitlin Clark. Every little girl doesn't, because if I'm, I ain't never, and this is not, I'm, you know, a lot of girls say you're playing a race car, this and this. I ain't never seen a little black girl with no Caitlin Clark sign and a little Caitlin Clark jersey. So what about the little black girls? What about the little? Uh, I don't know, Hispanic or whatever girls. Like, it's different types of little girls. So, yes, we could promote Caitlin Clark, but there's so many other stories to be told. There's so many, much other stuff that you could say, that you could talk about, people that you could highlight. Like, I don't understand why. It, it, it's Even with... It's pious, pious, and God loves pious. People say, well, because pe people love Caitlin, because she's been force-fed down your fucking throat. You don't watch enough to know anything. Exactly. She's the only person that you see. If you saw somebody else a lot, you would like them too. Exactly. And, like, and and it's and it's and it sucks because at the end of the day, it's not it's not Caitlyn's fault. But we've seen this. It's the same old song. We've seen this before. Why are people acting like we didn't just see the same shit with Sabrina and Coon the Contrarians? I don't know how in the hell you could be mad at Sabrina and hype up Caitlyn, baby. That don't work. It does Wait, not work. Wait, turn that up. <laughs> turn that it up. It does not turn work. It up. You cannot sit here and say, I don't understand why y'all was hyping Sabrina. I, I don't understand. She don't She don't need no shoes. She don't need other shoes. How do you understand that? But you can't understand Cece. Has Cece broken the records? Hell yeah, but Sabrina was Sabrina was amazing in her era too. Sabrina don't got no championship. Neither does Caitlyn. Sabrina's was a hypothetical, but Caitlyn had been twice and lost. We are dealing with the same thing. I don't understand how you can understand this, but you act like you don't understand this. It don't work. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Like, what are we doing? Come on now. Being intentionally cool. I agree, because even with the ESPN special, I mean, I feel like they got it right with the Camilla. You mean they threw in Kayla Clark, and then they threw in Kiki Rice. That, that was a question mark for me uh, as far as storytelling. There was Brakia out there. You had Angel Reese. You had, you mean, so many black girls that were born, you mean, in the southern states or, you mean, or, I don't know. It, 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 it's, it's complex. And, I, and I'm just glad everybody can finally see what we've been talking about now. We haven't made this up. This isn't a new thing. Um, it, it's just, it's damn me the L ain't watched, but three ain't games this damn. season and homeboy was on their ass so mad, from tip off. <laughs> He was shitting the whole, like, the whole game. He was like, now, nah, what the fuck? I was waiting on him to throw a, like, fuck in there a couple of times so I could hear it in his voice, but he was pissed. He was. <laughs> it's, 
it's so to me like I always I always look at these moments and that's why when LSU went down and all you know all the 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 shade room blacks and the baller report blacks was like well South Carolina got to do it for the culture and I'm like even looking at the championship game those same people weren't tweeting about the game those same people weren't talking about you know dang look at Tessa Johnson's performance or dang look at Raven Johnson's defense these it it's it's crazy because the girl was like well you you um South Carolina just a respectability team well. Actually not. Like, Don is an older black woman who grew up with parents that left South Carolina in the 1950s. The type of racism, the type of segregation, the type of disenfranchisement black people in South Carolina had to feel, and the type of the way they had to exist in society throughout that time created created some, some real division. Like, think about it. Southern black Christian people, like the the intersectionality of those beliefs and the way that those things conflict creates conflicted humans. So Don, as a black girl growing up growing up in the hood of Philadelphia, then going to college at a PWI in Virginia, not even the DMV Virginia, like country Virginia, goes off, you know, finds finds fame, plays hoops lives her dream, but is surrounded by white coaches, white women and white men, then comes back to South Carolina where the Confederate flag is still flying, where major, major um, conservative politicians continue to exist, is now coaching a black team full of black girls in the South where people still go to church on Sundays, where fans still only want to hear Sweet Caroline and not Nuck If You Buck. She has to navigate queerness, religion, blackness, um, politics, all on a team full of black women in the deep South. So no, Don does not have the privilege of coaching a team that gets to go shake their ass on, on TikTok. She does not have the privilege of coaching a team that can go fight somebody and get away with it. She doesn't have a team. She doesn't, she doesn't have the privilege of coaching a team where if her players get caught with marijuana on campus, where it's just going to get swept under the rug. She does not have the privilege of coaching a team free. She has to coach his team to protect the team. And so the way that she coaches the team is not because she wants to. It's because she has to. And so people don't like that. People want to see them go go be social media sensations, being in music videos. And for those that can do it, we applaud you. But we don't have that privilege. We just don't. And until we as a community can acknowledge the privilege that exists in certain spaces and outside of other spaces, we won't ever be able to have a real conversation about this South Carolina team because everyone is projecting and not actually understanding the real what's really happening in these spaces and who has the privilege of doing certain things. And- even with that, I feel like the teams last year, I think their their personalities were just a little more zipped up. Because I feel like this year, you see more personality. You see more personalities. You heard the girlies be popping on the TikToks and all, but it's just going to be to a certain extent. Because unfortunately, like, I do got, not even just young black women, I got young women. I know people weird on the internet. People are weird. People will sexualize you. People are weird. Don't do that. I don't even think it's a respectability. It's just like a Girl, don't do that. People weird. You know what I mean? Like, no, you're not going to do that because people are weird. I see how my words are turned and twist and all of this. And I just be, and I say what I'm supposed to say. So no, you just not, we're just not going to do that. But I don't even, that's not even respectability. Some shit is just common sense. But to me, when you're comparing it to a, when you can't compare it Donna, to a Kim because they don't have the same mindset. Kim don't give a damn about stuff like that. So I don't, I don't stuff like that is just silly to me. Go ahead, Shay. No, I was just saying, to Dolores' point, you you bitches sat on here and you tried to tear down Dawn because she was praising the Lord on TV a week ago. Then when she gets asked a trick question by OutKick, who I don't understand why the hell NCAA is allowing OutKick to come to the fucking tournament, and she lifts up transgender athletes, then it's, oh, well, you know, love Dawn, love her for this, love her for that. Which fucking one is it? 
you can't try to go on a witch hunt for her because you make it seem like she's a, you made it seem like she's a goddamn trying to baptize people in the middle of the game. And then, but because she can turn around and be dual, a duality person and say, oh, well, actually, transgender athletes should be allowed to participate. Now it's, oh, I love her. She is incredible. This, that, and the third. How the fuck do you center yourself in a narrative so much that you can pivot like that and try to make a witch hunt out of Dawn and now she's your champion? I don't get that shit. And for all of you transphobic sons of bitches who went and took that as an opportunity to pile on Dawn and pile on this program and talk about, oh, well, she probably got some trans. Look at these people calling all types of people transgender and shit. Fuck all y'all, first of all. Second of all, you woke up a fucking loser this week, bitch. And third of all, transgender athletes can play, dickhead, because y'all don't read shit. Can Zach Eady come and play if he wants to? No, bitch, because you don't read no fucking rules. Well, yeah, before, we move on, before we move on to the portal, anything else I want to add? Yeah, I think to Shay's point, like, it's that duality, like, and so much in life and just in society is, like, and that's why when, like, that's why it's so confusing to me how people don't understand us as the committee. Because we saw in real time Don have to move between X's and O's and motherfucking politics in two seconds. And so when we say hoops is a microcosm of society and race is always a factor, this is why. Because there's no way you don't understand how people can go from saying, Don, you know, what do you think about trans athletes, right? That is a mother, that is a political conversation, y'all. Like, and it is directly related to sports because w- what they're really trying to say is, is that others, blacks, trans, um, any person that is not cis, white, man or woman is an other. So how do we politicize their existence to make them uncomfortable in any space that we don't think they should be in? This whole thing, like, and so when we talk about South Carolina doesn't get equal coverage because it's a team full of black women, we are talking about it in the context of that very conversation, of that our existence is politicized. So when people get on this app and do, to to Lowe's point, being contrarian coons and try to jump and twist and dip and flip and use their HBCU degrees a- as a badge of honor, but then want to flip and be contrarian about conversations that directly reflect our lives, it baffles me. Because how do you remove race from from our life when everything we do is politicized? So it, it 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 is crazy to me. We watched we watched that that person intentionally take a moment and take a jab at Don so that she would lose focus. So that even in trying to explain to the world that my faith has gotten me through tough times. Oh oh she she just projecting religion onto the world. Is she like that like one plus one? Like she can't do she can't do shit. She and then, can't. go ahead. Did you see that little graphic that came out that was talking about the um different universities and how like um open they were to different communities? It's just yes. like yes. this shit is not an accident. <laughs> we like this shit is not an accident. Like I I just can't believe like, and that's why I feel like I don't. When people say, I don't understand what you mean, like, Don don't get no unnecessary hate from this and this. Y'all are on this that raving hell about this woman praising the Lord. When y'all got another coach that just got an extension because she um had some misconduct going on her staff. Like, about, I, I, I can't, y'all, I can't. It's, it's just so frustrating. It's and so- the gag is, like, they asked Lisa Bluter the question and she decided not to comment on it. And the same people who criticized Don and said that she was trying to force her religion down people's road or it made them uncomfortable 
turned around and said, wow, a comment from a coach like this on this big of stage is so huge when she could have just, you know, ignored it and just talked about the game. And the gag is it's her faith and her belief in God and her relationship with God and her trust in God that allowed her knowing the response was it was a lose-lose situation knowing the kickback that would come from responding during this time her trust in god allowed her to answer that question the way she answered it and the reason why you love dawn and her response it's all tied it's literally all tied together like when you are when you have but you wouldn't know that i guess if you uncomfortable with people relationship with Christ. So yeah, whatever. These people don't have no souls. <laughs> like, they don't have no compassion. They don't have souls or they can't use their compassion for black women. I think I think that's I think ironically it is gonna sound so cliche, but I, I say this all the time. These people don't got nobody that love them. They are missing love in their lives. They're missing compassion. And that's just what it boils down to me because there's no way that you acting like this on the internet about this stuff. You you you're missing love. You need some love. Dawn is love, dawn is light, and when you're in the goddamn dark, you don't know what that is. You don't know what that feel like. I don't have to be super churchy Christian to know what that is. That lady is love, and that lady is light, and you so damn dark and dusty and dirty that you just can't feel that, and you and you can't feel her presence, and you can't understand it. That's what your motherfucking problem is. So you need to do some soul searching and probably try to figure out what the issue is, because it's you, it's not her. Like, I see that new love. There I was, giggling about the demons that I had played with many hearts, and I'm not saying no names. Then the thought occurred, kid drops me, my eyes burn. Because I said to myself, I, so I can feel it inside. I can't explain it. <laughs> we all need a little love. But guess who got some love? The University of South Carolina Gamecocks, led by Z. Dawn Michelle Staley. And what was the theme for the season? Love. Where did we start the season? In the city of love. Wee oui, wee, oui, Patty. We got a daddy. Ha ha. Wee wee. Croissant that. <laughs> Excuse me. It hurts the call. Hold on. Dude. Yeah, I, I, these people are sick. I would say they're going to hell, but they don't believe in that. So. Okay, sorry. I'm back. <clears throat> so, now. Are you all done about the games? <laughs> yes, we yeah. can go to the portal. <laughs> Maybe. Unless something else hit my brain, I'll be back. Bingo, because if... I, right, right, left, right. Oh, <laughs> shit. Y'all, them people come... I will say we didn't talk about this heavy, but the people did want us to talk about how... This this a low moment. Um, The importance of... Y'all have kind of addressed it already, but the importance of South Carolina's defense this year. And do we think... Two questions. Do we think teams, after seeing South Carolina's depth and seeing how Don was able to maximize not only her starters but her bench, do we think teams will try to strive to do that next season? And also, do we think um, that there will be better defensive teams moving forward? That was what was left on my little three. Yes. Just the, every, I, I would imagine a lot of teams will look like South Carolina's team this season. Absolutely. Yes. Um, They're going to try it. I, as far as trying to get more depth, I do think I see more teams heading in that direction, but I'm just not convinced a lot of teams can defend the way South Carolina defends because it's a culture thing. Like, I, it's a desire, uh, the way Don coaches her players up to where it's like, if you don't defend, you not getting your ass on that court. And I'm not sure that every coach is willing to, you know, have a Malaysia on the bench and if she comes off and like, you know, she come out the game and she's not doing what you have as an expectation for defense that they're willing to sit her down and be like, well, you're not playing today or challenging a Tessa who can shoot lights out to be like, I see what you can do on defense and I need you to pick it up more, you know? Yeah. And I think that's the difference in mm -hmm. what we see from a South Carolina defense versus maybe um, a team that might not defend like them. Sometimes it's just a coach being willing to be like, no, you got to buy in on defense. And I don't know if a lot of coaches are willing to do that. I don't think everyone's a good manager of people. Like you said, like everybody's not going to be able to have depth because, you know, depending on what those expectations are that you set at, you know, over the summer, 
Like, you know, you may have those people who want to get their individual stats. And I think it takes, going back to what you just said, it's about culture. They, they, everybody coming into this program knowing that for the past few years, I think, what, the highest average anyone probably tallied was maybe 60, 70 points a game. You, If you're wanting to get more than that, this isn't the program for you. And so if you go into those other programs, you know, you can't really do that if you have that type of depth because yeah. you can't be able to manage those people. Like how dark. And these ex, them X's and O's coaches don't know how to cross no X's and no O's on defense because the schemes don't they stink. So, and yeah. I think I think I think it'll be we tried. I think it'll be imitated, duplicated. I'm not sure because you you have to have a certain like Tesla got on the mic and she was like, I mean it's it's just culture. That's what we do. Um, that's that's what this program has been. That's who we are. And I don't know if you can replicate that. Like, it's easy to say we're going to get some girls and I'm going to say, okay, you're going to come in, you're going to do this, you're going to do this. But when it's time to do it, are you going to do it? Kind of like Yana said, and are you going to be able to keep them happy? Are you, you know what I mean? I just think it'll be a lot. It'll be and coaches are going to have to be honest. Like, I think we've heard how, like, one, like a major thing that draws a lot of uh, Don's players to her, and it's probably the same with Gino too, is that they're honest from the jump. Like, they don't, in recruiting players, they tell them from the jump. We heard it from Breezy's parents where they said, they, you know, she told Breezy, like, if you're trying to score a lot or win freshman of the year or you're trying, you're not going to do that here. Like, you're just not. And players are bought in from the jump because they already know what it is when they're coming in. Whereas if you tell a player you're going to start immediately or the ball is going to be in your hand, this is your team. And then as soon as they get there, it's a different story. Then you don't get the bought in that you're seeing from teams like Don has or Gino has or Tara has during the moments when, you know, Tara was kind of dominating too. So you got to be honest with those players from the jump about your expectations and what you want the team to be. Don said something interesting, and the UConn men's coach said something similar last night about how big the parents are mm-hmm. and that they focus so much on who they're recruiting based on their relationship with the parents and how the parents push them. Like Hurley was saying, like, if the parents are saying, oh, well, this is the coach's fault and, you know, my kid is great, then he doesn't recruit them. And I'm sure Don probably thinks along those same sentiments. Yeah. And you can see, because the parents, I don't never see no South Carolina parents on here acting a fool. That's part of culture. That's the ones that did, their kids transferred out. So, right. So, that's <laughs> part of culture. Oh, let me think. Now, look, look, like, I'm like, wait a minute. Oh, oh. Think about it. No, help me, baby. I ain't thinking. <laughs> Under uh, Sitting like a hawk watching, staring. Under the goal all the time. Yeah. I put the first person that came in my mind in the chat. Twenty twenty white. The forgotten no. year. White. No. No. Texas, Jesus, y'all. Oh. Uh, oh. I, I don't. Remember, I didn't remember her people doing it. Oh, they showed out. Okay. Real yeah. bad. Yeah. 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 I, I was talking about the other one who be staring at you, like burning the hole through your chest. <laughs> who was that? The forgotten year. All oh. right. <laughs> yeah. The forgotten no. year. 2018, 19? <sighs> With the big eye, little eyes? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. So, guys, so speaking of that, that is the perfect time to jump right into the portal. <laughs> Why would he scream like that? <laughs> <laughs> the same place where those players went to the portal or back in the portal. Um <clears throat> so <laughs> Okay, so today or the past uh few days We've seen quite a number of people jump into the transfer portal. Um, there were some surprises. I think for some, we uh, we discussed this last week in regards to the Oregon States. We know that there were um, some some conversations in regards to how they felt like maybe, you know, them no longer being a Power 5 institution or a Power 5 program, you know, temporarily. 
would cause them to be overlooked when it came time to, you know, broadcasting or the level of competition since they'll be having to play for two years in the West Coast Conference. So we saw a few names enter. We've seen Haley Van Lith. You know, we, we were all kind of counting down. You know, once Angel this, um, declared for the draft, we were like, what is, what is Haley going to do? Uh, she decides to enter the portal again. We've seen um, the young lady that still owes Dolores a jersey enter her name into the transfer portal in Deja Kelly. And so some of the names recently that have joined um, is Grace Van Sluten. Um, Asia Petty was already in there. Zay Green uh, recently announced that she would not be following her head coach uh, to Alabama and them, but instead she will enter the portal to look for a place to play um, her final year of college eligibility that will best suit her. Janiah Barker today, um, it was announced that she would be into the portal to Leah Van Olhofen, Leah, 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 mm, bless you. What's out, baby? Leila Filia, Tamia Gardner, Chance Gray, Talia Scott. Those are some big names that are in the portal right now. We know that some players have already uh, committed their destinations. Georgia, she and, and Clara, they've followed their group chat, and so they are now – uh, keeping the, the group chat blue. I don't think it was green anymore. Uh, they gotten rid of some of their um, other contacts. And um, the young lady decided a whole week later to follow her dad. To, well, it's expected that she'll be following her father to Virginia Tech. I mean, to Kentucky as well. So out of all of these names that have jumped into the portal, who are your top 10 names? Or who is the biggest, I guess, needle mover so far that you all think that's in the portal? Bring all the Oregon State portal mommies to South Central LA, baby. <laughs> you want you want both of them. I mean, it's I'm we TVO. She good long as she lead that America's team stuff in Oregon. Lead that up there. Uh, I'm good with Gardner or Barker at the four, and then I'm straight. Mm. As long as as long as sister gets in the gym. If Tabaka got to pass you the ball to rebound, that's fine. But I can't <laughs> I can't you and Rhea being lackadaisical, I can't do that. Do we think that with the pieces that have left Oak I mean Oregon State, do we think that uh Reagan's gonna jump in? Do you yeah, think it'll be I, wise if she oh. does, especially if she's she losing to. a lot? I know I think she she might want to stay and be loyal, but I think she needs to. For herself. I mean, I mean, she could still hoop and do her thing. We've seen people do their thing at other, you know, other schools, but I think she should at this point. And I think she just going, I mean, it sucks, but. Um, yeah, her and uh, Donovan, the point guard, are two that I'm still keeping my eyes on for Oregon State because I thought they also played well and was crucial um, throughout their tournament run. And a lot of teams could use a solid point guard like uh, Donovan. So I'm interested to see what she does. Um, but as far as needle movers, uh, Philia is like at the top of my list. I think um, like overall, just watching her game, she's a great player. Uh, at Michigan, it was a little bit tough because sometimes they don't really have, well, for the most part, I didn't really feel like they had a lot of people around her. So she was forcing a lot of shots. But I think if she's on like a balanced team where there's other stars or there's other people that can carry the load, she can be like a really great asset for a team. Other other names in the portal, also Amari DeBerry. Uh, um, oh, God. Low. The... You got little Caitlin. Um, I know. I know. Yes, she's also in the portal. Tioni Keys in the portal. Um, there, there, there are quite a few names out there. Some places. What the hell is going on in North Carolina? Like, yeah, uh, they they got tired of having um North Carolina Kelly Harper child. They are twins. Mm. Mm. I think. I think to, to the initial question about the portal, I don't think there are any Lauren Betts, Tahina Pow Pow, Anissa Moros in this as of now. Man, I but, don't know. I but, think it depends on how the coach use them. Okay, that's where I was going. The reason I, I will say this. I knew those players that I just listed would be fine no matter where they went. Okay. I think the okay. players that are in the portal right now 
their success or the team's success is contingent on them picking the right fit. Okay. So I think this year when I look at the portal, I'm that's why I've been so like adamant about let me make my little list about where I kind of see these players going. Because I think if they make the wrong decision, it's a terrible portal move. But I think if they make the right decision, the team could be a contender. Like for we me, have we have seen terrible portal moves. Right. Like if Talia Scott goes to a team like Kentucky, I think Kentucky goes from being middle of the pack in the SEC to being a potential top three. Um, if a player like Grace Van Sluden goes to a Maryland or an Ohio State, I think those teams take another jump up. If a player like Chance Gray goes to LSU and is their starting point guard, I think they're back where they were this year. Um, if um, Janai Barker goes to like a Maryland and plays for a coach that forced her to be disciplined, I think we see a jump. You know, I think each of these players can, like TVO, I think both those players that Shay mentioned take, you know, in addition to their rookie class, make that team look even scarier. So I think if they go to the right places, yes, but I don't think any of them are good enough alone to just go somewhere. Interesting. So who are the programs do you think have the most glaring need right now? Yeah, a lot of them. Should it feel like everybody with all the transfer outs? Um, I'll go with teams that have potential to make it back to like the Elite Eight type vibes. NC State, I think, could use some post steps. So if they see like a post player that they like, I think they should hop on it. Like, I think AJ Petty could be good for them. Uh, honestly, a Janiah Barker could probably be good for them. But then I think Janiah needs to be a little bit more disciplined. So maybe not. Um, who else made it to the Elite Eight? Notre Dame. Uh, didn't make it to the Elite Eight, but Notre Dame's a team that could use some post depth as well. So I think a lot of teams can. There's some teams that need like maybe one or two more pieces, and then there's some teams that need a whole lot of pieces. Um, so yeah. So from the Final Four, if you had to take each, t- if you had to take or add something to one of the teams that were in the Final Four? What would that be? Let's start with UConn. That's, that's good. Um, I think UConn has coming in the pieces that they need. Um, I do think their biggest thing is still going to be a post player um, because I still be back. Um, they have the freshman, the international player. Um, Ayanna Patterson should be back. But all those players are coming off injury. Sarah Strong will be on the way. Um, But none of those names are proven veteran players in college. And I do think that they need that. Like, I didn't play enough this year. So I think, if anything, if I'm UConn, I'm looking at a big, big, like 6'3 and up um, with experience. So I don't want a first year. I want maybe a junior, sophomore grad, grad transfer. Um, that's my UConn, then Iowa, who child. The thing about Iowa, though, is this. I think if, if Lisa is smart and wants to build on the success of Caitlin, she has the chops to do it. Because I will genuinely say I was really impressed with how she found ways to win games this season. Um, in a season where I thought the team might take a step back because Susanna was gone. And I think that she has proven that she does know how to develop players. Like Hannah Stokey has been uh, uh, like Gabby Mark, all those players that stayed in that program ended up being really solid seniors. So if she can pull like a, um, a, a, a girl from um, like a Charlize Ledger Walker, um, some of those uh, Oregon girls, Washington girls, those West coast kids and get them in her locker room. Um, Especially maybe just even like two guards and maybe a post. I think that Iowa maybe can be a contender in the Big Ten again. 
the girl uh from Villanova. Villanova. They said yeah. they got mutual interest. Oh, Austin, Lucy. Lucy. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Okay, that's 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 ideal. That's the type of player that I could see them getting. Because remember, what's the girl that beat them from Creighton? She was an Iowa player. Then she transferred to Creighton and beat them two years uh-huh. ago. Very similar. Like, yeah. So yes, yes, yes. Lo Hanson. Yeah. Um. So somebody in that no. vein. Ain't it like Hanson? I'm tripping. Man, Lauren Hanson is the one that went from Mizzou, Mizzou. to Michigan. Okay, 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 okay. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. So somebody in that vein, and then an, another big, um, and and I don't, cause Gabby and all them gone, so they probably need a shooter too. I like a foster. That's a dog. Um, then who? Oh, who else? North Carolina State. North Carolina State. Um, post play. I think they are um full up on guards, probably overflowing. Tosh Cobbs, um, but yeah. um, they do. Um, I like Baby Cox on the team. She's just a little small. Um, but they're both their post players are leaving, so they're gonna have to maybe Tiana Key, you know, um, type player. Um, her and maybe two others. Um, and then South Carolina, same thing. Another veteran big. Um, if Kiki Offren, if Kiki Erie Offren is on the table, oh swing. snap. Hold up, y'all. We got news. Brad, Brad, B, B, come on. Breaking Uh-oh. news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. Oh, Tom wow. Tom Vanderveer is retiring from college hoops. I told y'all that shit was... Co- I, I knew it. I knew it. I'm going to share wow. it to the stage. Wow. <laughs> what did I tell y'all? What? Rob, you on stage already? I tweeted that today. I tweeted that today. I may have had a little hint. <laughs> oh, wow. Kiki, come on to South Carolina, Buki. Now, how did I segue right into that the way I did? Oh no, ma'am. <laughs> Kiki is from LA. Come no, on, ma'am. Home, sister. no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Kiki her- is from LA. Who is, who is her favorite player? Um, Shay. Her favorite player plays an hour away from LA. Who is her favorite player? It's Asia, right? Asia, who? That's fine. Asia plays an hour away from LA. That's fine. That's fine. But her statue is across the country. Okay. She can take a picture of it. We'll send it to her. <laughs> no, ma'am. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Baby. Pick a USC, Kiki. Pick one. <laughs> pick a USC, but pick the first one. <laughs> we might see that. Damn, Tara. Oh, Jesus. Can, oh, oh, so Kate Kate Pay becomes as her successor. Successor. Who? Kate Kate Pay. I don't know her. She an assistant. I I, she, I don't know. <laughs> but not for real. We got to pivot in real time. Let me just say, for all the conversations we have about hoops, like we gotta like Tara is one of them ones like. Her staying power, her innovation, her ability to do what she has done in the game, like, cannot be denied. So, girl, enjoy your retirement. Go sit on a beach in a, in a, um, a Kini and, 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 and Bob. Still peanut butter and jelly Bob. Like, Tara's been doing this for a long time, man. Like, she, she deserves this break, you know? Like, go and enjoy because you put in the work for the league. Um, like, I think we talk about the dream team and the fact that she was coaching that team while also being a coach for Stanford. And, like, she's been at this for a long time and she's been given to the game for so long. So um, I'm happy for her. I, I kind of hate that this means Gino's going to pass her next year as far uh, as yep. all-time winning, you know, uh, since they were so close. But... Um, I'm I'm really happy for her. They got to put the bob in the rafters, Mo. <laughs> now we got two wings being hung in the rafters. <laughs> oh, God, Damn. y'all here. B, look at uh uh Rob. He said he requested to be on stage, but he on he on stage on mine. I don't mind. I don't see him on mine, so he, he not. Mind. It's leave and go out, Rob. Hold on, I think there it is. He took mine. I'm glad I wasn't on fire. He's so dramatic. Because, I mean, y'all was ignoring the hell out of me. Shit, I was trying to bring the breaking news. Shit. I was on mute. I was like, you on stage, you on stage. But I guess you weren't. You were sitting on it to me. Congratulations, Tara. An Olympic gold medal, 
three national championships and a legendary bulb. Mm. And what she got? How many? How many before Gino passed her? Oh, he's it's really close. Two or three, maybe. Yeah, it's, no. it's not many. Yeah. Oh yeah, because they made it to the final four, so he caught he caught up ground on her. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that is is wow. Child, Tara didn't want to get on that plane and go from. Uh, <laughs> I told y'all, Tara didn't want to go all the way to uh, Chapel Hill. Shit, <laughs> bump Chapel Hill. She ain't want to go all the way to Syracuse. <laughs> Yeah, that's a Imagine Target. Or Miami. Imagine Target. Oh, that's nasty. <laughs> oh, Clemson. Oh, God. She said, uh, keep me out the country. She's like, I went from the bay to this. Absolutely not. What is a Piggly Wiggly? <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, please. Because Piggly Ooh, Wiggly got good a, breakfast. What, is that a white refrigerator? <laughs> <laughs> If she had tried Piggly Wiggly out, she might have stayed an extra year. I don't you know. You right. You right. <laughs> Gave us some macaroni. <laughs> then I got okay. that, bitch, get that fried fish and them grits in the morning, bitch. That should have changed ooh, your life. And ooh, okay. that thing wake you right on up. Per. You got me saying for the girls. True and hotel. for the girls from Marlboro County, that 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 them damn um fritters at the motherfucking Carl's in the morning. Oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> they would have they would get Carl some boiled peanuts. <laughs> oh no, 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 Brandon. <laughs> <laughs> And a Tahitian treat. <laughs> Bitches, nah, you gotta no give her time, salt, and vinegar don't count. Shit. You got to give her the lemonade instead. Oh, yeah. A little, a little peanuts in your orange little soda. little Milo's. <laughs> Y'all are so country. <laughs> Bro, Tar been coaching at Stanford longer than we've been alive, Mo. Like, God damn. Well, with the exception of Brandon, but yeah, you right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. Oh, oh. Let me see. Tara Vanderbilt. Let me see. She got to stand for in. Oh my lord. <laughs> okay, next question. Um. So. Um. So yeah. So Lo, you said her her successor is whom? Whom? Oh Lord, that was a go. That's so nasty. <laughs> Oh, you got a motherfucking. <laughs> I was like, whoa. <laughs> Your throat is heavy, bitch. <laughs> Disgusting. Sorry. That's, ye that's, ye that's years of throating. I'm like, oh, that oh, oh my God. God. The water hit, the whatever that was, hit the back of that shit and said, swirl, bitch. Oh, my God. Wow. I'm screaming. Wow. I really thought that the job would have gone to Lindy LaRoque, um, who is at UNLV, who's also a Stanford alum. She's been there on the staff. Um, but I guess Tar you know, that's how you know when when that program is yours. You basically leave somebody in charge. And so there there are not a lot of people who get to kind of hand pick someone else to take over. We expect Gino and eventually Dawn to do the same. I'm not sure if Kim will probably be able to do the same at LSU, maybe. Um, it's not necessarily her program. But who but would be more Who's she going to go pick? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where's this going? <laughs> she's going to give it to, she's going to call Nina Davis to give it to her. Um, but congratulations to her. So now, since we were already talking about the portal, then who y'all poaching from that team? I already told you, huh? No, none of the guards. I know that much. Give me, give me motherfucking. I'm a, if I had to break up the team, I would send the 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 other black girl to Notre Dame. Um, not uh, it was key, it was the backup big, so it was key, yeah. Key, I need some up. Send her to Notre Dame. Um, bring me Kiki, and everybody else can go with the Lord. I don't, I don't care too much. She really finna let um Gino pass her, and mm. I think part of that retirement is what do y'all remember when Monkey um Tara, Tara wasn't about to be up in there crying like um um Muffet was that year when she was like I just so <laughs> now why you went there <laughs> y'all that lady was down <laughs> she was down so bad child so that <laughs> the writer was on the wall you know the 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 crop the, the it was it was bare the, the it was bare outside of Kiki was about to put up forty five a night and they was gonna be two and twenty five. 
she had already had, if I'm not mistaken, she had already had kind of like some reservations when it came to NIL, right? Yes, child. She was the old guard. So, yeah. So, she was one of the coaches that was like, eh, when it came to that. And so, yeah, that I, I really think the straw that broke that back was the cross-country travel for conference. Like, you go from playing, I think, max, maybe a maybe three-hour flight, if it even is three hours to the Utahs from, from the Bay. Um, Arizona is a little so, further. Or, 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 yeah, so to Arizona is maybe three hours. To now, you're going well over five, sometimes probably six hours when you have to go to the Syracuses and Pitts or Florida State to Miami. What if... Tara is taking a vacay just so she can be the new Golden State coach. I support it. Take a little break. <laughs> okay. A little breather. So and then I, I thought about get that ready also. to coach. I'm I'm a pass. I thought about that also. Um when they invited her to the um to the press conference. Obviously it's in the Bay, so you know, they are women's basketball there, right? Sanford, Cal, all that good stuff. So she, Charmin, and all the others were there. But I said I I don't know if Tara, no, it's it's okay to give somebody else a chance. Tara's been yeah. on this long enough. That's we, true. We got it. Go and get Lindsay. It. Lindsay has been doing well. We just saw that the Charlotte Hornets um have gotten permission to speak to her. I think that that someone it'll be good for one. It's a black woman. Two, former number one pick. Someone that has W experience. Someone that has officiating experience. Someone that has coaching experience and successful coaching experience at that. So I think um Lindsay will be a great hire for. Um, them if they decide to not go with her for an NBA job. Had we covered all the um teams in um or, or the top transfers yet before, uh, Miss Bob came and broke that. No, it was just me because you were asking us which um players. I mean, what does each of the final four te- final four teams need? Okay. So, look, go ahead. Um, you have you? Oh, you hadn't done South Carolina yet, um, Dolores. So, oh, I did. I said Kiki. That's when we got the oh. tar news. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, Lo, what you think? Um, the final four teams. Um, what would you give each one of them, um, to help them get back there or to remain, um, contenders? UConn needs a big, um, a big, a real big, not a big, a makeshift big, a big one. Um. NC State needs some bigs in general. Stop, stop getting them tiny, crank them up little guards, little little toy guards that you crank up and put a battery in it. You know, you crank them in their back and let them just stop getting that. <laughs> we need more. Like, get you, get you some some girls, some bigs, some 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 kids. Like, they need some bigs. Um, I would think they need a uh, point guard. Um, uh, but they got the little girl coming in. I think Sanaya, in my opinion, is a better. I I don't like her at point. No, it doesn't work for me. Real point guard, um, big. Um, yeah, I don't I don't too much like how that team is configured, but whatever. Um, who else? Iowa don't care. Uh, South Carolina. I think we could use another big guard to transition out of breezy. Um, a three, like a solid, solid three, big guard three. Um. I'm not sure what Joyce, Joyce can maybe be a three, but maybe that's four. I'm not sure. So I would say a solid three um, and, a, and a big. Okay. Shake. Oh, yeah. I'm play the five. Oh, okay. I, <laughs> I don't give a shit about nothing but the Trojans, baby. We <laughs> all. Well, what you want to take then? Um, shit. I mean, if Kiki on the way. I'm good if we can get Kiki or Janiah or Gardner and then a veteran point guard, like I think we good. Then we'll have a freshman coming off the bench and Kennedy will start at the three. I'm straight. Um okay. I, I agree with Lowe on uh Game Cost getting like a, a, a big guard that can really like just do all the things on the court. Uh uh peace and love to everybody else. <laughs> Yana. Um, um, like I said earlier, I'm keeping an eye on Reagan Beers because I think two of the teams in the Final Four could use someone like her uh, in NC State and UConn. Um, I think both of them could probably benefit from her. Uh, NC State, yeah, that's pretty much it. Iowa needs, I feel like, everything, to be honest, outside of 
a four because I think Stokey will be better served at being a four. Um, so if they can get Lucy Olsen from Villanova, that'll be a good start. Um, South Carolina, I definitely want to see them maybe try to get like a big guard. I don't know if there's one that has entered the portal yet that I'm like sold on for them. But I do think they need a big guard because they're a pretty small unit. I I always knew they were small, but when they played Oregon State, they were really small. And so I do think that they could use like maybe one more big guard on the perimeter um to help Breezy out. Because Breezy, although she's like six feet, I think six feet or six one, she's still a little tiny, a little tiny yeah. thing. So just somebody a little bit thicker to help with the perimeter defense when they play teams with bigger guards. Okay, Craig. <clears throat> you got all the hail bay tossing um the hail bay tossing bigs out there in Texas. You got any others that you gonna send to some schools? Or is he working? Okay, we gonna come back to Craig. Rob, who would you assign to anybody? I just know you about to cut up. No, Roberto. Now he about to cuss us out in two seconds. Okay. <clears throat> so go ahead. We, we got a few questions coming in from the audience. We want to take a look at those. And, of course, we see some of you with your hands raised. Uh, let's see. Okay, teach Chris said, teach the children about Raven. She been here. She been been here in Atlanta. Exactly. Um, testify. Okay, yes, yes. Keep testifying. Um, let's see. Praise the Lord, saints. Yes, yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. So, okay, these co can we talk about breath control? Who's breath control? Dolores, man. You late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, we're going to get to the audience. Let a few of you all up. Tom, Reba, welcome to the stage. Reba, go ahead. The floor is yours. Hey guys, um, I, I'm gonna just get into it. I do not want Janaya Barker and Merlin. I'm sure we're not on her <laughs> list anyway, but I don't think she'd be a right fit. Like Dolores says, she needs someone to, you know, settle her down, but she would absolutely hate Brenda Freeze. So, like, I don't even want to put her through that. So, I can't do Barker. I think she needs to, she needs a hard coach, but I think Brenda's kind of like too harsh. Hmm. And Ole Miss won't work either. I see a lot of people saying Ole Miss. If I'm trying to develop and go somewhere, I don't want to go to Ole Miss unless I'm already a bad bitch. And she struggled the first two years, so it's kind of iffy. Like if she was a juggernaut her first two years, then yeah, I would go to Ole Miss because you already have what you need. But I don't think she has what she needs yet. I would look at that coaching staff and not go to Ole Miss. So, oh yeah, I forgot about uh, Mr. Harassment. I'm so fucking weak. Okay, Chris. Hey, Chris. The floor is yours. Thank you, Reba. Good evening, y'all. Um, first hey. of all. Just wanted to say, you know, I uh, wanted to have a testimony moment, uh, giving honor to God, who's the head of my life. Amen. Uh, <laughs> so I just could, um, just a quick uh, tidbit before I ask my question. Um, I wanted to say I appreciate y'all uh, for allowing us to stay connected during the tournament. I think it's important for community and cohesiveness and y'all doing the motherfucking thing. So keep doing what y'all doing. Y'all got love here from me in Atlanta and to everybody around the world. Secondly, uh, since we're talking about, you know, things in and out of the portal, uh, when you're looking at other SEC teams, as we know, it's one of the better divisions. Um, so my question would be for uh, Lowe and B. Terrell, what do you think about uh, Texas A&M with Joni, uh, what they need, um, thinking about Auburn, what needs to go in there? And then my other question would be for Dolores, what do you think about what Iowa State needs? That's my girls. For me, I'll start with Texas A&M. I feel kind of I don't want to say I feel bad for Joni, but I do because I feel like a lot of their success was kind of hung up on if Janiah Barker came out and did what we know Janiah Barker can do. And in my opinion, Janiah did not hold up her end of the deal, truthfully. And I feel like it just was a disappointment. Um, now, could she have some 
better girls, yes. But she knows she's new. She's trying to rebuild. And I just think Janiyah didn't do well. She just was bad. Um, she didn't look like she was in the gym all summer. Um, she was foul prone. I'm not sure if that's, I mean, maybe it could be the coaching staff as well. So I'm not going to put it all on, you know, whatever, but she just didn't seem prepared at all. Not sure. Just really didn't look like she was in the gym. So maybe her leaving will help because you can rebuild, uh, try to continue your rebuild. I think was Koulibaly done y'all. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't think so. I think Koulibaly was a sophomore last year. Okay. Okay, well, she, so she got another year. You got to find a replacement for Lauren Ware to compete. You got some good, decently heady guards, and I and not India Rogers is gone. So she got she kind of she's in a massive rebuild. But I think maybe Janiyah leaving helps a little because clearly it didn't look like she was bought in, and y'all know that was that's my daughter. So I'm be honest, didn't like look like she was bought in. So it sucks. It seems like a subtraction. But maybe it's an addition for your culture, which starts the movie into the right spot. Because I do think Joni can coach and can get it done. So they just in rebuild mode. So they just need whatever. Auburn, you're losing Honesty Sky Grayson, and you're losing um elite, not Aliyah Mathiru. I always get them confused. What's the other girl? Jemaya Mingo Young. Yeah. So that's that's a really heavy load. You got that one post that's staying, so you just got to pick up some more guards, and you need some more scoring. Um, and I don't, so I'm just kind of interested to see what she got to put her recruit, her recruiting pants on. I think if she gets kids, she'll be decent because she can coach defense and we can see you could play. If you could defend, you could get some, some wins, but she got to put her recruiting pants on, but I don't know how that's going to go. She got her a little, um, a little sniper coming, a little white girl coming that shoot threes. Don't do nothing else but shoot threes. So she think, I think she she got some score coming, scoring coming, but we'll see. Yeah, I work. Yeah. Um, Chris, same thing. I think this really gives Janiyah leaving gives her a chance to really kind of reset the thing. We saw what she was able to do at Georgia. She she, you know, turned Georgia into a consistent top team in the SEC. So I think with what left after um Gary Blair retired, and you know, it was kind of the the, the program was kind of like flatlined. A little, I won't say flatlined. That's that's a little harsh. But she had to really bring in a lot of her pieces. Um, we saw glimpses of what we thought A and M could have been towards the end of Janiyah's rookie year because we know she was injured the majority of the year and then they started like really kind of dusting off some people towards the end of the season and so if they had put that all together this year we thought that they could definitely have made some noise and yes not only in just the SEC but along with the national tournament so with Janiyah entering the portal um, she'll go and get some of these other pieces, get another full recruiting cycle under her belt to get some talent there. And I think that I won't be surprised if they're back as a top four team in the SEC really soon. I mean, because outside of number one, it's kind of open in the SEC anyway. Auburn, um, uh, to be honest, I, I, I mean, hey. She did well this year. Hopefully she can um cap I, I think I know you said she does have that shooter coming in. Um, but outside of that, I just don't know who else they have coming in. They lost they're losing a lot of their senior pieces. The really quick point um point guard girl, she kind of dribbles a little spastically. Um Oh, Bostic? Bostic, yes. She gotta go. She is she is she done or I don't care, she gotta go. So that I mean, it, it'll be interesting to see what um Johnny Johnny's able to do there at Auburn. I don't really, to be honest, I haven't watched a lot of their team as much to know because um outside of defense, yeah, it was hard. Um, it was hard watching them sometimes because it was a little frantic there. So yeah, but shout out to the black women. I'm rooting for them. Um, uh, I will say just quick to both. I think to Lowe's point. I think when you go into a program and you know that a top three recruit is coming with you to that program, you kind of put your your eggs in a basket. And when that basket or that egg doesn't hatch, then it sets you up. Um, and so she's just going to have to respond to that, like losing that type of player. But I think ultimately Johnny is a coach that does better with l- – less problematic players that's no shade but she's a player like you know when she can just focus on what's on the court and let you know kids that can self-regulate is what i'm trying to say um and it, and, and Janai was definitely a kid that needed help being regulated um so i think just being a little bit more intentional about who she gets in the portal 
putting her head down and going to recruit. I think she'll be fine. I actually think Auburn um, is in a really dope spot um, if Johnny, like, uses it well um, because she has shown that she can win games um, and does have the tools to do it. Um, so if she can find uh, two pieces out the portal and then do pretty decent in recruiting, I think they'll also set themselves up to be successful in the SEC. But in regards to Iowa State, um, I wasn't surprised by any of the players that they lost to the portal. Um, I think the writing was on the wall. The only one that was a little frustrating was Bristow um, because I thought she – um, could still thrive in that system. She just needed to work on individual development. Um, so that's fine. I think if anything, they will still need to get um, another big, whether it be backup or just somebody to take a little bit of load off Adi so that when they go up against teams um, where Adi isn't, you know, she may get in foul trouble or maybe she's not as dominant, they still have another option in the post. Um, and then I think just, um, just a, another backup or two, a backup point guard, like they, they, their freshman class really was perfect for the program. So they don't need a lot. Um, but I do think a backup big or even a complimentary big would be nice. Um, and, and just a little bit more depth. Um, I was thinking one of the Oregon state girls could be great for them. Um, yeah, there's, there's a few type players that fit that that mold even some of those like big 10 white girl transfers um could work in iowa state well thank you all for answering my questions uh i appreciate y'all again uh shout out to the committee i hope that people uh futuristically continue to do research on how you all have created community and i hope to include you in my future research thank you chris appreciate that I got a question for you all um, on um, on the stage. Uh, we know we've talked about, obviously, the transfer portal, but not only are players transferring, but programs are transferring as well. So which team that's moving to a new conference do you think will be in a spot for contention right away? So, you know, those are your teams that are going to the Big 12s. Those are your teams going to ACC, SEC, and Big 10. Who do you think is most or best equipped so far to be like, I'm coming, to t- I'm, I'm coming for this? Um, I'm a, um, what the hell is it? Uh, USC. They I think they run can run the big thing. 10 like the yeah. Them bitches yeah. About, they about the Lindsay about to become a legend in four years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So for those who aren't aware, um, of the latest roundabout in conference realignment, I'm gonna try to do this from off the top of my head. So from the pack, <laughs> from the pack, pack 12, you have Washington, uh, excuse me, you have Washington, Oregon, UCLA, and USC going to the Big Ten. Then you have Stanford and Cal going to the ACC. You have SMU also moving up um, and going to the ACC. And you have uh, Arizona, Arizona State, Colorado, and Utah all moving to the Big 12. Then you have SEC, joining the SEC, you have um, Texas and Oklahoma moving to the SEC, and then um, the Oregon, yeah, Oregon State and Washington State are, for two years, as of now, just two years, moving to the West Coast Conference. So out of those programs, who do, you know, do you what do you think about the SEC? Where do you see Oklahoma and and Texas falling within there. Do you think they come in and compete immediately? Oklahoma, Oklahoma going to come play. hug Arkansas and shake their hand, and Texas going to come hug LSU and shake their hand. Okay. okay. Yeah, I think Texas will finish in the top four. Um, if not top three, I think you get Rory back, and um, you get some decent pieces in the portal, and they'll be fine. Um Oklahoma is an interesting one, honestly, because I do think that since they're bringing all of their starters back, if I remember correctly, um, sometimes having like just that consistency amongst your roster can be enough to help you um, navigate certain things in a conference because there's just a lot of up and down in the SEC right now, a lot of transfers in and out. So I wouldn't be shocked if Oklahoma finishes higher than expected just because of the consistency they have with their roster. And so y'all don't think Iowa going to um, run the Big Ten? No. 
I think it's gonna be Ohio State and USC. What about UCLA? I think UCLA. Uh, I don't there. see it. I don't see it. I don't you, see it at you, all. As of now, like just looking at rosters, UCLA will finish higher than Ohio State, but you see, Ohio State does have some great prospects in the portal. So if they they if they swing out on two of the three players that I think are huge prospects for them, then they they shoot back up to second for me. But if they lose out on those players, then they might not even finish in the top four. Um, I think if Kiki can change her style, then yes. But if she played like she did during like their conference tournament and then the NCAA tournament, I don't see it. But I don't even think Kiki was the issue most of the time. Was, I think yeah, Osborne agreed. was the one that disappeared for them. If they can get somebody, like if they can get some better um, guard play from the perimeter and knock down threes, I don't think there's anybody in the Big Ten that could match up with what they have inside. And this year, their issue was kind of like the issue South Carolina had in the past, where it was like you had Aaliyah in the paint, but you didn't really have consistent three-point shooting on the outside. Um, but once Betts gets the ball in her hands, I don't know if there's anybody in the Big Ten that can guard that, and that's going to be their separator. Y'all think... Uh... Deja could be a, a charisma replacement. Oh, apps the fucking no way. Oh, oh, I'm just saying because no. people keep saying she's gonna come to LA. She can't come to where I am. So <laughs> that, that, literally all that all UCLA needs to do is the same as I said, Chance Gray should go to LSU. If they get Chance Gray in UCLA, I put them back where I put them this year, potentially in the final four. I wouldn't mind Deja at Merlin, honestly. Oh, I Reba. think hey, no. Hey, I hey, think a hey, hey, Brandon. Hey, you USC. Hey, you USC. Hey, anyway, you jump ship. You USC now. <laughs> no, hold on, hold, hold. Don't, don't do that. The home team always the home team. But I don't give a damn what team I cheer for. She can't be on it. <laughs> I think she would do all right at Merlin. Really, you think that realistically, Reba? I do. Because she she won't be the star. Like, Brenda, she's not doing that star shit. So she's going to have to learn how to play as a team player. But and team, she's, she's decent, you know? The team y'all had this year didn't necessarily learn how to play as a team player until the very end. We didn't learn at the end either. You see, we blew a 20-point lead to Iowa State. But, so, yeah, but... So if the team this year couldn't learn, how days are going to help? She needs discipline. Like, Brenda's not going to let her just do what the fuck she wants. Well, she, she she isn't. And I don't position? think she... Why not? She let Cheyenne do what the fuck she wants. <laughs> this is true. She don't have... She didn't have another option. Oh, okay. Because she don't play the bench. But, uh, yeah. I don't know why she let Cheyenne do, do what she wants, but you know, it's you see where it gets us when she lets Diane do what we want. What she wants. Yo, yo, said Bria knocked Deja in her damn throat. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bria's a sweetheart. She wouldn't do that. Oh. <laughs> Sunny, you're you're on the stage. How are you? Today's a new day. Uh oh, Sunny. Raise your hand again. When there is no sunshine, nothing but cl- I don't know the rest. Tom, go ahead. Tom, hey, put right I- on. Whoa. Who is this person with their back showing? Uh, I came here, cool, calm, collected. First off, I want to shout out the committee. Second of all, Reba needs to be banned on all social media. Deja Kelly is not coming to Maryland. She is not bringing the ring light. None of that. I don't know what is going on. I don't want Chance Great UCLA either. They might Bruins, but they gonna what? waste her. I think Corey Close is never ever gonna get you over the top. But that's a conversation for another day. I just wanted to be on stage and chat shit with y'all. To be honest, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> that's an interesting I- point though, Tom, because I thought this roster was the one for her. Right. This this roster should have been Final Four with ease. If they would have listened ease. to her, they would have. She told them to get the ball to Lauren, and they just said, fuck it. Shit, looking like Indiana. Indiana looked good. Mm-mm, he talking about the fever. Oh, oh okay. 
Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> I want to know. But don't worry, the saber is on the way. <laughs> I want to uh, kill. Anyway, I want to know who y'all think my Buckeyes need. What do we need? Who do we want? Dolores. Y'all think my Buckeyes is girl bad. Um, my but- Buckeyes um <laughs> need to grab Grace Van Sluten. Um, I think Layla Philly is another um, player that can come back home. Um, those two are definitely locks that I would like to see um, at Ohio State. Um, outside of them, um, I think they should reach out to Gardner. Um, I think they have been missing a, 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 a solid post player that can actually move. Um, uh, uh, we had missing got... the over not too much. Tom. They have been missing a solid post player that can move. Um, yeah. So I definitely think somebody like Gardner, even a Janiah Barker. Um, I don't know if her and Cambridge are familiar with each other, but I think that could be a really dope duo. Um, yeah, I think I, I don't. I don't think they need a lot of, of pieces, but those. I think if they could get three of those players, um, that would that would do do some great work for them. And I, I think it's too And I think they they need a, a spot up three point shooter because the style of play um doesn't work without, without that that type of player. I also think Cody needs to step it up in terms of being a first team All American for them to be up with their potential. What more can she do? Jump shot, be more poised, better decision making. Defend. Can defend consistently. Now she can defend, but consistently is the problem. So who are all of your teams, Tom? Hold up, Scott uh, or Stanford. Wait, what happened? Who? I I wouldn't be mad at it. Who? Who? Scott Roark. I wouldn't be mad at it. As what? But no, they already got. They already Mary got. got I know, but I'm just saying, if Dolores was the AD, yeah, <laughs> Dolores was the AD. Yeah. But you know, it's going to be similar to like the Tennessee situation. How they're going to go with who a the previous firm, legendary coach the wanted first before they do their own thing. <laughs> so what is the only job that? Well, not the only. Um, because we, we all jobs are important. Marquette. That, that sounded like right? all lives matter thing. Hell no. <laughs> is it Marquette open? Yeah, Marquette yeah, is considered open. the I guess the other power job open with it being in the big east. So do we think that Scott will go there? So here's my thing. I don't feel like or yes, I understand that, you know, for TV they may not the be seen TV. and stuff if they go to the I mean if they play in the WCC. But I do feel like, you know, mm. They will turn that league in, in from a you know one to possibly two bid league to a four bid league because they are competitive what? teams, Oregon State and Washington State. So you know, yes, Gonzaga's gonna always be good, but I feel like they could have lift up the West Coast Conference for a little bit instead of running from it. I understand you want to play against you know top competition, um, or what you feel is top competition every night, but I feel like there's some really good teams there in the West Coast Conference. Everybody ain't gonna find a home. But I, I understand. Think their, their issue is gonna be like, because we already talk about how some Power 5 teams don't like to schedule mid-majors, right? So yeah. the question is, what is their out-of-conference out scheduling look like? Because for the past years, I like don't really LSU. think Oregon State had great non-conference scheduling and they benefited from how great the Pac-12 was. So now they can't do that anymore. They have to schedule tough in the non-con, but with how good they were last year, if everyone were to say, how many Power 5 teams can you actually say would have put Oregon State on their schedule for the non-conference? So then they're banking on we have to win our conference in order to even make it in the tournament and yeah that, that's tough yeah it's too much risk as a program when you're going to a conference where there's only one bid and anything can happen in the tournament like 
it's too risky if I'm moving to that conference. I'm getting out of there. They just leaving them high and dry. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, that's also, I'm glad the Bob retiring. I'm just going to say it. I've had it with her. Now, what uh, what, I'm about to say, what's she doing to you? Before Y'all Tom know keeps what going, she hold on, hold on. Before Tom keeps going, this is a Tom opinion. This has nothing to do with the committee. This is a Tom opinion. Okay, uh, Tom. Uh, we, we don't need clearances because I'm coming cold. Calm, we do need clearances because no, the bitch is coming in my comments. So I'm going <laughs> to clear the rest. Dolores, you've been acting wild on this space. It's not me. I've been good. Because I'm a bad bitch. I'm going to fight regardless. And I ain't? I'm, I'm actually done it to that. Anyway. <laughs> she ain't no The diva. reason. <laughs> the reason I'm glad the Bob is gone is because she did my girl, Haley Jones, dirty. I don't want to hear um, it, Dolores. Man, I'm so did glad you brought her up. I'm glad ever, she's gone. Ever again. And I, uh-uh. I want you to hear me good. Don't you ever say no damn Tessa Johnson reminds you of Haley Jones. She does. And I was not that the was, only one that, that thought was some it. Motherfuck- you was eating on some damn crocodile ass cheeks. Because that, uh, that was some stupid shit. Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Some she kangaroo does. pussy. Her cadence is the exact same as Haley. You, that, that, that's some, some motherfucking drum major shit. That ain't no damn hoop talk. I'm talking about some damn cadence. <laughs> Dolores, I'm not about to play with you on Haley Jones because I know you do not like her. And she's I, my I, I rolled player. down for Haley, but that. Haley out of shape right now. She Did y'all know that you. Tessa's sister played for Ohio State? Iowa State. I, yeah, Iowa State. Oh. I didn't know that. That makes perfect sense. Them girls too. I think she was there with the girl who left Tennessee. Anyway, y'all want to hear my story and how I watched the final game? What final game? Oh, shit. What time when was it? When Cox won the Natty, I wake up at 6 p.m., 40 degrees Celsius. It's hot as a mouth. I wake up, can't find the stream anywhere. I'm on YouTube with some one pixel doing the most, wasn't even awake, to watch us win. It was amazing. It was glorious. I had the whole street awake. The kangaroos were chirping. It was a lot. But we won. We did it. And shout out the reporter from the next who said pick and roll point guards should stay in pick and roll systems. Because <laughs> what's your little organ Wait, team Tom, does? I think you had broke up. What you say? Say that part again. I said Mr. Reporter from the next. No, no I don't want to wait. No, I believe no. It. Tom. Uh, 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 no. They. They. From the next. They. From the next. What? That ain't the part we was telling. No. They. They. Misgendering. I said I didn't want to misgender. I do so not don't. know their pronouns. That, However, that we're telling you is they. They reported that there we pick go. and roll point guards should stay in pick and roll systems. And that point guard from the pick and roll system was the best three-point shooter in the nation on the national championship-winning Cox. <laughs> so, I need that reporter to quit their job immediately. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, sir. Look, look, how, look how beautiful it is when you slow that thing down. Look, i just be getting so heated. I can't even think. I just talk. It just, yeah. Shout out to the cock. Okay, anybody else got a Shout thing? out to the cock. Period. Okay, anybody else got their hand? Um, hold on. Low. I... All right, so if not, um, hold on, let me see. Yeah, why does it feel like it's 2 o'clock in the morning? <laughs> it does. Y'all, we watching the draft on playback. Y'all, when is that? This coming Monday? Yeah, it's like yeah, a week. we'll be on playback. It's, the week it's on Monday. It's on Monday. Um, y'all, make sure y'all check your phones if you are in the committee. Um, uh, uh, a fan league on what's some people? Um, 
the the Nike um you and the click the app what's what's the thing y'all fantasy the, sports huh the little fantasy leagues yes that oh Jesus yes if you are in the fantasy leagues our drafts are coming up if you do not show up to the gra- draft and you end up with um with it with um um Rachel um, Bannon um, with <laughs> I was trying to <laughs> if you end up with Rachel Bannon on your team. Don't come here trying to trade no pick, okay? Or so retired play. Right. And right. also, if you spend one hundred and ninety-two dollars on Brianna Stewart, don't come trying to trade no pick, okay? Who did, oh, who did it? That was Shay, right? Yes. No, <laughs> no, no that was you got that was <laughs> No, I was saying that go. she got Asia for like $199. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. So make sure y'all come ready and prepare. You show up on time. We thank you. You best not get a yo, yo, Rachel yo. Bannerman in your draft. Fingers crossed. We need to spice something up right quick. Give me a minute. <laughs> Brandon. I'm tempted. Brandon, yeah. don't you damn do it. Y'all. We, we had it a little bit. Give us just one moment. <laughs> I'm going to be real quick, just in case. What is he doing? Herbal. Oh, go brother. ahead. Do it. Herbal. Oh, brother. Welcome. I, I don't know your name. I just see Herbal. Made in Hawaii. Welcome to the stage. Oh, my bad. I couldn't get my mute to unmute. Hi, y'all. Hey. 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 How you doing? Um, just had a brief question for y'all. Um, wasn't sure if there was going to be any space made for additional questions regarding the topic around trans athletes. So I wanted to ask y'all if there's still space for that before I go into that. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, wanted to ask, as far as discussions around that topic, um, what discussions have y'all come across from commentators, people uh, cover sports, yourselves, um, anyone that you've seen prior to Dawn saying um, what she did? Um, has there been a lot? I mean, I know um, Brianna Turner, WNBA player, Tom has been extremely vocal about support for trans athletes, um, but it's not been a common question asked to coaches and or players. Um, I know the most recent collegiate incident was around the swimmer. Um, and I that like that didn't really make waves in the basketball space. Um, so it's not a common conversation in women's hoops. Uh, I want to follow up. I think the NAIA banned transgender. Correct. Yes. Today. Yeah. I was actually going to bring that up, as a matter of fact, because in the NAIA, um, their write-up, it specifies, well, first of all, they break it down by men's sports and women's sports, boys' sports, girls' sports, whatever. In the men's section, they do not mention anything about hormones. They do not mention anything about trans athletes, but the women's section, they do. Um, The reason why I even bring this up is because it is a very um, important conversation to have. And I don't want it to be kind of like glossed over as like a we're only kind of bringing this up to defend Dawn and the team and leaving space for, of course, that nuance of why Dawn may give the type of response that she gives for that type of topic. You know, unprompted, no real preparation for it or whatever. But there is an additional nuance to that that goes into um, recognizing that the discussion does not happen um, enough or really at all, (laughs) uh, for lack of a better way of putting that. And I feel like in many spaces, what we end up doing is we're ready to come to the defense of someone else, but we completely ignore what even brought us to that point. And what we're ignoring is the fact that there is a blatant attack on trans folks. And not only that, what we see happen often is that it affects those who are not just trans. Um, 
I'm an athlete, former athlete. I won't even go into details of that. Just former athlete, non-binary. So I kind of can relate to the to the idea of what does being an athlete look like for me if I don't necessarily pick a gender <laughs> or if I am not the quote unquote assigned gender. Um, so I guess my question slash challenge for everybody is to kind of have that conversation more, reach out to com- to community more because you will find a lot of athletes, former and current, who are trans, who are non-binary, and I don't hear from them enough. I don't hear from them enough, even in spaces like this. And this is are no shame fam- at all. Are you are you familiar with Lasia Clarendon? Lasia Clarendon, yes. Okay, so um, I lo- I actually like really appreciate like the way you've approached this conversation. Um, but I think one thing that we have been really, or we are and very intentional about is speaking about intersectionality and the ways in which being a minority in one aspect and not having access to certain things makes it harder for all minorities. So yes, um, Don being asked that question, I as a, as a person that supports Don did feel the need to come to her defense, but I'm also v- very much an advocate for trans inclusion but what i also have to be very aware of is that i am not a player in this space so when i approach the argument i have to approach it as an ally and not as a someone who's experiencing those things in real time so when i talk about these things i have to talk about it with the understanding that there may be players that i like that might not feel that way and because i don't play with them i can't say how they should feel. But what I can say is that the people that I do support, support trans athletes being in the space. And so I can continue to amplify their voice and their platform because in this conversation, they would be the experts and they would know. So Don coming to, Don saying what she said in defense of trans athletes allowed me to come to her defense and say, I know that me supporting her allows these people or allows trans athletes or or non-binary athletes or whomever to have that support from someone that is literally at the height of the college game. So I completely agree. Um, I do think it is something that we do need to continue to talk about. But what I personally am very clear and very big on when we have conversations, we have to talk about it with with understanding and knowledge. And so I only speak about things that I've done a lot of research on and that I know and that I I study and I and I'm clear about. So I can offer support. I can offer allyship and and always use my platform to retweet and and say. But what I won't do is step in the forefront the way I step in the forefront about things like race um, and other conversations, because that is not my space of of complete and total understanding. So while I am in the process of learning um, more and talking with, with people that are in the space, I can speak from that. So that's that's the position that I choose to take. Um, but she has her hand up, so I'm going I'm to let her go. Oh, no, I was just going to say that I agree with both of y'all. I think it's like the Lord saying, like, obviously it was a question asked to Dawn, and so a lot of us felt the need to jump in. But, like, for me personally, I tweeted about it. I have transgender friends in real life. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? I, that sometimes it's about being an ally in all fronts. And I think the issue that I have with the whole conversation is so many people are going to a space of banning and we don't want these people because they're hiding behind transphobia. Whereas you all are making up these hypothetical situations about what well, they could hurt somebody and they could do this and they could do that. And it's like we're not even at that point of understanding anything to make those assumptions. Like, why can't we just figure out a way to, and I think we're all still learning, but for me, a lot of it is just Max and transphobia and Bingo. people just wanting to be nasty. To mention, I know Tom's hand is up, but not to mention the fact that when we talk about banning transgender athletes, we're not, we don't care that there are racist in the sport. We don't care that there is now an assistant coach um, on a team that is a known abuser we don't care that the um nebraska coaching staff has a sexual assault allegation pending so to shay's point transphobia is like it's a political issue is what was because we talked about this earlier this like 
using sports as a platform to make a political statement is what all of this boils down to. And so I have to be very intentional about not speaking too much about something that, again, I don't know enough about. So I can speak from from a point of support um, and knowing that there is a lot of hate behind even the 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 need to even attack people who don't play currently in D1 as of that we know of publicly. If there are non-binary players that just are choosing, you know, not to be public, then we you know, that is the conversation. But as of now, we don't know of any major D1 athlete that is currently um, in that space. But I do know of a few WNBA players, um, 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 the Atlanta Dream, uh, Durr, um, AD Durr, um, Leisure Clarendon, um, are two that come to mind. And we all on this space have been very intentional about providing our support to those athletes and will continue to do so. Anything else that you want to add, um, made in Hawaii? And we we definitely appreciate the question or the statement that you've um, um, that you mentioned. So, um, we saw your post earlier in regards to you having a topic that you wanted to contribute. So, I was glad that you're able to attend tonight. Yes, actually, um, thank you for that and, and allowing me to um speak. Um, it's something I'm deeply passionate about. If you could not tell, uh, and we love it. And, <laughs> we love passion. <laughs> And, and I'm not I'm not as polished as, as I am being right now. I'm I'm trying to respect y'all space in that regard because um, I'm a guest here. Uh, so my only it, it's not even so much a question. It's more of just a, a challenge to y'all, um, like moving forward, whether it's people listening or or y'all a part of the committee. Um, doing during your process of learning, and during your process of understanding. I think it is um, key in your process of elevating um, voices to expose your your followers, the people on your pages, things like that, to the information that people are spreading around um, trans identities and getting a better understanding of these people that exist. And I say these people, but I'm a part of this community, but yes, these people that exist, um, these athletes that exist, um, it's, I think, one of the thing with, in, in your process of defending Dawn, of course, I think there are other steps we could take to further it without um, putting yourself in a position to be the spokesperson, you know what I mean? Um, pointing people in the right direction to the people who are the proper spokespeople. Um, and that just comes with learning. That just comes with educating and, and getting a better understanding of uh, people who are doing this work in this community and knowing how to disseminate that information. Um, I hope that makes sense. I'm a rambler. I have ADHD, so I'm sorry. <laughs> but I hope that makes sense. Yeah, I think um, just a little bit more clarity in terms of like what like what people because I think a lot of times on Twitter, like we are, we, you know, we follow who we follow and we see who we see. And if mm -hmm. we see like if we come across someone that we know is of influence in a space and we connect, then that's an instant connection. So like to your point, I think as those people become more apparent and as we learn about those people, it becomes much easier to defer um, to those people and allow them their platform to share information that we don't have access to. Um, but until we have access to those people, it's really hard to um, provide a platform. Um, but I think as I'm appreciative of you being in the space, um, and being educated and, and also just being a member of the community um, and sharing. Um, so I think that allows us to know, hey, like, you know, as this conversation continues, this is someone in the space and familiar with the space um, that can give you more information than we have. So I think that that's, that's very clear and that's very simple um, to do. Um, and I think it's something that we've, we've done. Um, not in that conversation, but in others. Um, so I think that that is definitely a do a doable for us. Um, so definitely grateful for you coming to share um, your knowledge and your experience, because I think moving forward, it'll be awesome to have you um, as a resource. Um, but also knowing that being a resource is draining. Um, so yeah, 
So, and I'm okay with that. That's, yeah, that's no, I, I get it. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can sense that. That's the only reason why I bothered to come up here. Um, I, I don't mind being a resource to those who are, um, you know, in good faith looking to learn. And yeah, it's, it's just about being intentional. So that's all I really got to offer. Thank y'all, though. Thank you so much, Made in Hawaii. We got enough time for a few more because y'all, we done been on here for two and a half hours. Tom, what, what you got to say again? I just wanted to speak on what was just discussed. Firstly, oh, yeah. I give you a lot of props. Um, the courage that it takes to come up on a space and speak to the context of what you spoke is very, very powerful. And I think it's something that, you know, takes a lot of pride. And I think I just wanted to shout out to you for doing that. Um, secondly, everything I say is obviously my own opinion. I think we need to have a system where we are sensitive with the language we use around this topic. I know it's a very new topic to a lot of people, but just ensuring that our language is of respect. And I'm not saying that people in the space aren't, I'm just saying a lot of the things we've seen recently on social media in this space is very demeaning and very incorrect in terms of language used. Um, And I think before we can have the conversations, I think we all have an onus to, do our research and become more educated on the topic because there is a lot of miseducation going around on the topic. And I think that's why Dawn received so much like pushback was because a lot of uneducated people were speaking on the topic that they don't know anything about. Okay. Um, Pause, 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 let pause. Um, I agree, but let me, let me clear a few things up. Um, One, um, this is a black ass space. That's that's the first thing. Um, and so we speak in ways that are not always clear to people that don't know us and are not Southern and don't understand certain colloquialisms. So that's one thing. Um, two things, I think we're having three different conversations. Um, a lot of the people that had major pushback from Don intentionally had pushed back towards Don because the, uh, it is this is a political conversation like when we talk about trans identities and other non cis hetero white male identities we are put we are politicking people's identities and so that that reporter intentionally asked that question so that he could follow up w- and lead to politicians in south carolina and nationally and just news pundits being able to write and attack trans people so that was an intentional attack so the people here up here, it is not then our job to go re, re reword, retalk, re restep things that were intentionally done to attack at a community. So no, I definitely agree, and I I uh, didn't when I was referring to the languages, I wasn't referring to people in the space. It's just generally the things I've been seeing on Twitter, and obviously a lot of the comments under that are not people from Black communities. So. I right. So that. that's my point. So my point is that you're speaking to the wrong community is what I'm trying to say. So right, like right. that in your allyship and in your advocacy, that has to go towards those people. Cause the people up here, you speaking to the crowd. That's what, what that's what I'm trying to say. Like, right. Got you. Got you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. See y'all next time. <laughs>